was the starting sound. That was great. <laughs> I feel like that's the one you should have put next to the microphone. I know. <laughs> I don't want to overstep toes in terms of production here. Right. It's like an you know. ASMR. <laughs> uh, what's up, everybody? We are live here at Bad City Common Professionals for another edition of Wind Down Your Weekend. As always, I am Small Press Shan, your host, uh, here with my co-host, Wednesday Phil. What's up, Phil? Hello, hello. Um, very excited to be here. Lots of comics. This was a fill week for me. This was a fill uh, week. A lot of really great stuff that I'm excited to talk about. Um, I've been going into the library a lot more and uh, getting a lot of graphic novels and trades. I'm going to try and read uh, Warren Ellis's Planetary. I never read it before. Mm-hmm. But every time I go into Austin Books and Comics, that would be the one that Ty would recommend to me. He'd see my. He'd always ask me to like go through my pile, and he'd be like, "Have you ever read Warren Ellis's Planetary?" And I'm like, "No, I'm okay." <laughs> now I'm finally doing it. So Ty, if you're watching this, which I know you're not, but if you are, not at the moment. I'm reading Planetary, <laughs> but I do, I do think he goes back and watches oh, them does he? sometimes. So if you if you see this later, Ty, uh, shout out to Ty and Awesome Books and Comics. Uh, give them some love. They have probably the best trade game in town. Honestly, like they got a lot. It's yeah. It's, it's a hard. giant store of everything. Whenever we uh, don't have a trade in stock, I'm like, have you? Do you want me to call? Awesome books and comics because I'm pretty sure they have it and people are like oh, I don't know are you sure and I'm like I'm pretty sure they have it so um, check them out if you are looking for back issues we don't have or trades we don't have because um, yes. they're always good for that so um, but yes this is definitely a very fill week of comics uh, I laughed because when I got the comics in and started looking at them I literally originally sorted the stack by uh, Phil's picks of the week, <laughs> like endings, number ones, and uh, like uh, just other comics like were like that were number twos or whatever, like in stocks. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy to say that everything I thought would be a Phil pick of the week is a Phil pick of the week. Of course, they're also my picks of the week, so I didn't even add or like <laughs> anything oh, really? to it. Yeah, that Sweet. was just I was like, oh, this was already my stack. So, yeah. um, happy to see that. And we've got a lot of people starting to tune in. Hello, everyone. Um, if you're winding down your weekend with us, we are using Seven Deadly Cab. This is the Center Select. I had to read it. Sorry. Uh, it has one of the best back like stories for the wine yes. ever. Um, Phil picked this one out today. Haven't tasted it yet, but it is. It's going off of the fact that it is a wickedly dish, delicious cab sab. Um, that's supposed to make uh, all of your sinful desires real realized through a taste of wine. So let's see. Hmm. Interesting. That's good. I feel like you said to not go for too sweet, and I think this is in that ballpark of not too sweet. This is not too sweet, but it does have sweets, which I know you like. And um, yeah, no, this is good. It's decently good wine. This may be one of my top choices. Ooh, it is just a Phil's, like, pick week, man. <laughs> I mean, I did pick it. You did pick it, so yeah. apparently we're going with that. So, Seven Deadly Sins, um, Center Select Cab Sab. This is a, a California cab, uh, which I have been told by the great Megan Hutchison on more than one occasion uh, that a California cab sab is an automatic correct choice. <laughs> so well, There you go. There you go. We've got it. So... Uh, want to jump into all of these comics? Yes. Because I know that when it gets to picks of the weeks, so you're gonna go. We're gonna go forever. So buckle <laughs> up, strap in. Phil and I promise you that six hours. It will we're be a lot. Six hours tonight. It's a double extra special <laughs> spectacular. The only reason you know that it might not is because our dinner <laughs> will be getting cold. And <laughs> that's so, true. Um, that's the only reason why. So we um we're gonna lightning round some of the ones that. You didn't get to read so that when we get to the ones that you did we can talk a little bit more so uh if you watched last week you know that we did two weeks together yes which was very confusing for both phil and i <laughs> because some of the books that we thought this just came out last week are out again this week uh for the next issue but it turns out uh between paper delays and Phil and I just also being delayed, that we're just back to those issues being back. So, uh, kicking it off for the night is Source Point Press's Rise of Dracula, Issue 3. 
Um, we have, you know, the Shan rule of three of like, oh, something big, like enough to get your attention will always happen, like mm-hmm. probably in the third issue. So if it doesn't sell you, like that's kind of where you're going to lose it. And there is a major cliffhanger that I don't want to spoil because I know you're reading this and you didn't Ooh. get to, but the end of issue three, I was like, oh snap, if you're not reading Rise of Dracula and you were on the fence, this is going to be that issue that really draws you in. Um. If you haven't read Rise of Dracula at all before, this is um, a sequel to, a, in I guess, a companion, I should say, to uh, Cult of Dracula, also done by Source Point, came out last year. And it is all about Dracula taking over the world and kind of bringing peace to the world by doing so. Yes, making the world a better place, which I said when we talked about the in the last issue like i kind of agreed a little bit with their reasoning why they're taking over the world um and i really liked how issue two ended yeah with kind of like a court of vampires uh do we get more of that we did not get more of the cult the Mm. court of vampires Mm. yet but i feel like what happens in this issue is definitely going to lead us back to that so um i'm really excited to see where this goes i can't say what happened at all on this issue because they don't want to run it for feel, for Phil. But uh, let's just say, you know, like, who runs the world, girls, is very accurate description of this um, series. Are you saying Beyonce's in this? Uh, I'm not saying Beyonce is in Beyonce this, but there has been Dracula. reference to Beyonce in, like, three different comics this week. So apparently it might also be Beyonce pick of the week. <laughs> yes. Rise of Dracula. If you haven't read Cult of Dracula... Maybe read that first. But you said you weren't lost at all, right? I wasn't, yeah. So there you go. If you didn't read Colts of Dracula, you can just jump into Rise, or you can start at Colts. I have both. I feel like I'm missing something. You though. feel like you're missing like something. Like there's something there that I need to know from Colts of Dracula. I don't know. Maybe just who Dracula is might be the only <laughs> like thing that you needed to know going into it because mm. it is a little different. Maybe I don't want to know. Who Dracula yeah. Is, well, you do know who Dracula is. Well, I yeah, mean, yeah, like, I but guess. like, yeah, if yeah. you didn't read it, you'll be like, "That's not the Dracula I know." Yeah. It's different. That's not Orlock. Yeah. But Warlock is kind of there. Yes. <laughs> Radio Apocalypse issue two from Vault Comics. It looks like Vault has gotten their paper shortage a little under control right now because um, their issues are starting to come out. And so this was a great week for Vault Comics. Uh, Radio Apocalypse is done by the great Ram V, who we know will probably end up in the like Eisner Best Writer category this year. Um, who knows if he'll dethrone chip and james tynion but he will be tough he will definitely be in that contention for sure this year um i would be surprised if he's not i guess i should say uh this is as it says an apocalypse and we have a Nothing left but one radio station. This radio station still broadcasting, kind of leading everybody to the safe places, giving them that last little bit, you know, giving us music through the apocalypse, kind of helping us, like, deal with it while also providing information. And um, this issue centers around the girl who's called the Day Tripper. And her job is, because you can only go out during the day, it's kind of got a very I Am uh, Legend kind of feel to, like, the way the monsters look and stuff, too. But you can only go out during the day. And so there is a woman called the Day Tripper who travels from one safe place to another, getting the supplies to people that need them. And so this issue kind of centers around what Day Tripper's life is like and kind of gives us a little bit more of the jobs that people have and the roles they take and just how crazy this world can get so yeah and this is one of those because every once in a while you see the word apocalypse on a book and you think oh here we go Mm -hmm. um but i i like the universe that exists here especially with the radio station Uh, i didn't get to read this one but i did really love issue one uh the artwork in this book is fantastic absolutely Um, and it's ram v so you know ram v at vault more of that and you're Please. gonna see it just I mean, this is issue two, so it's just heating up and if you've read Ram V before, you know it is like Ram V is the quintessential like third issue, like grab it kind of thing. Yes. So uh I can't wait to see what he does in issue three and I hope that it doesn't take like another three months to see that. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah. Uh Shelter Division issue two from Source Point Press. This is uh honestly and truthfully, this is a video game to me. Um, reading issues one and two back to back, I it feels like I'm I'm watching somebody play a video game in that it is 
like, oh, we've got this guy from the future who does jumper kind of things, and then we've got this other guy who has this power, and they're both trying, like, one, the bad guys are after this girl who has, definitely has the information that they need, and one team is trying to protect her, the other team's trying to get her, and all of these powers are just kind of coming together, and it's in one of those crazy worlds, so, um, literally, if you've ever enjoyed any video game, uh, you probably would enjoy this book. I do remember reading this, because this was the one, when I was going through the pile, and I was like, I feel like we just talked mm-hmm. about these books yesterday. Um, and this one was one of those ones that I read, and I was like, I have absolutely no idea what's going on here. There's a bunch of different characters. They're all kind of thrown at you with no real understanding of what their goal is. Uh, so I'm a little intimidated to pick this issue up. And this one kind of gave you a little bit more to all of them, but it also kept moving the action forward. So, um, like, we do find out a lot more about that main character by the end of this issue and mm-hmm. kind of see some of those connections, but it does still kind of have that, like, video game lightness of, like, the action is the drive and the characters are along for the ride. And you kind of, you have to, like, go up to them and press A to get them to tell you their story kind of situation. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Shelter Division. I I think eventually. Yeah, you should definitely I'll swing back, swing to, back it. to it. Uh, Blood on Sunset, issue three, also from Source Point Press. This is all about... It. This is a crime noir story with vampires. Let me just actually sum that up a lot faster than what I was going to say. Yeah, if you've seen pretty much any old school detective story, something with like a Humphrey Bogart in it, mm-hmm. uh, then that's pretty much what you're going to get here. And I... I really like it. I gotta be honest. I like, do. I do enjoy it. Like, I remember reading the first issue and I was like, oh no, this hits like every trope. I'm pretty sure they took every single piece mm-hmm. of dialogue from this or from every of those movies and like put it into this book. Um, but as it kind of goes on, I like the world building. I do like the, they're not called vampires, they're called eaters. Eaters. Mm -hmm. Um, But I kind of like the eater aspect to it. It kind of just makes it a little more refreshing. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's it's, it's hard to explain. It's one of those books where I'm like, I don't know why I love this, but it is. It's kind of the perfect blend of everything coming out right now. Because we've seen a lot of crime noir, a lot of like just detective stories in general, and we're seeing a lot of vampires, (laughs) a a lot of vampires right now. A lot of vampires. It's kind of it's kind of nice to have this book that's like, hey, if you are kind of enjoying any of those vampire books and you're kind of enjoying any of those crime books, just pick up this one. Yes. Add it to your collection because it's gonna it's the perfect blend of both. And again, issue three has seen uh, we learn a lot more about our our lead detective, like you know the investigator who's right. leading the thing in this issue. So um, I I agree. It's one of those where I'm like, I don't know why I love it as much as I do, but that's how I felt about Cult of Dracula when it was coming out too, right. and then Rise of Dracula has been so good, um, and also doesn't I don't know why it it is just so good, and so I feel like Source Point's kind of in that like zone right now where I'm like. I don't know why I love you, but I do. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. You're doing a great job. Yeah. And this is issue three. So for me, I feel like it's definitely made that, mm-hmm. like, I'm going to, I'll continue on with this it. for sure. Yeah. Um, Impossible Jones issue three. This is from Scout Comics. And we missed the live stream when Impossible Jones issue two came out. So we didn't get, I don't think we got to talk about it very much. But honestly, this is for people who are fans of things like Freakazoid. Uh, this is one of those superhero stories where she kind of just accidentally got superpowers and she's not a hero and she doesn't know what she's doing and she is just kind of winging it and thing like learning her powers and her suit all the time. Like she was a thief who, uh, while she was robbing something, didn't know that they were in like this lab that had all this cool tech. And her and all of the tech got blown up at the same time. And now she has all of these superpowers. And she's been thrown into this battle of good versus evil. And she's kind of just out for revenge against the thieves that, like, double-crossed her. And she's also kind of like, hey, superpowers. Like, I can play this off long enough to steal everything I want. And in this one, she has a battle against some of the bad, like, bad guys who have superpowers. And the superheroes show up. And they're like, wait, you can't hurt her. And they're like, she's a bad guy, too. And they're like, are you a bad guy or a good guy? And she's like, which one gets me out of this mess faster? <laughs> um, and so she's kind of 
really just using it, but it is told in that, like, that kind of same, almost animation style and uh, same comedy style as something like Freakazoid. So if you are a fan of, like, Space Ghost or any of those kinds of stories, you're going to you're gonna love this. And it's Scout. So right. you know it's ridiculous and it's wonderful all at the same time. Um, and that's issue three. We have one and two actually right on the wall behind me. Um, and this is issue three. is actually the first time she gets called Impossible Jones. So it's oh, really cool that she, like, makes up her name and stuff in this issue. So... Um, you're still you're still going along with it just like she is. I uh, I like the name Impossible Jones. Kind of makes me think of Kim Possible just a teensy bit. Just a but, little bit. Um, I mean, freakazoid. And honestly, the way she comes up with her name, uh, you, you it's like Phil coming up with his superhero name. She's like, oh, uh, like looking around the room, like that's <laughs> definitely uh, that's it. That's uh, that's what I'm doing. How dare you know exactly how I come up with things? <laughs> that's how I recently came up with my whatnot thing. I was looking around the apartment and I was like. A clerk's DVD. There it is. That's it. And that that's the one. You needed help going to clerks? You needed help getting back to Kevin Smith? I assume that was a well-thought-out plan because it was Kevin Smith and you. Uh, like, you know, this brain doesn't work so well. Oh, it's a shame. Know. Speaking of brains that might not work so well, God's <laughs> Brutality, issue four from Black Caravan. Um, I know we don't need to talk about God's Brutality when it comes out, but I also need to talk about God's Brutality uh, every time it comes out because it's ridiculous, and I don't think people understand what it is. Uh, this is the last great hair metal rock star uh, get sent to hell, and he is being saved by uh, Hercules and Thor in, from the classic versions of mythology. And this is pure black caravan adult uh, humor in a dark way. Dark adult humor. Yes. And a ridiculous. Like, there was one, like his, their biggest villain so far has been like Nazi wear ants. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a lot of ridiculousness to this, and that was the big drawing point for me. It's on top of the 80s hair metal mm -hmm. uh, main guy, because he kind of just fits all those things that you would expect about rock stars. Um, but this is, it's just a really fun book. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't go wrong. You're going to get a little bit of that, uh, you know, adventure road trip, but then you're going to get, like, splash pages like that to go along with it. Yeah. Lots of violence. The art's great. I mean, it's Rich Woodall. Like, he's been doing great stuff. Um, and this is honestly probably one of my favorite Black Caravan books. Dude, Black Caravan is killing it. And there is so many incredibly awesome things coming from Black Caravan. Uh, I just went to the, like, uh, Comics Pro event this week, the Retailer Summit, and they all the publishers are there, and the Scout like thing had this huge section from Black Caravan, which of course you know had uh, Joseph Smalky and all of them there to talk about like what they're doing, and Black Caravan is you're going to hear the words Black Caravan so much in 2022 um and you're not going to get sick of it let me just say no. that because it's going to be every book is going to be amazing and so yeah everything is going to be on point i every time i hear joseph smokey talk about anything that they're doing oh, it's so good it's just yeah i can't wait i like don't know which books have been announced and which ones haven't from comics pro so i'm like i want to tell you everything but i'm also like i don't know if i'm allowed to tell you anything we'll talk off so air. we'll talk off air yeah <laughs> Uh, Dancing with the Dragon issue four from Scout also bringing this one in because this is uh, a wrap up of this series I believe or at least of this arc and we were going to do some endings and I should have put that next to the endings but I didn't. Uh, this is to a guy and a girl who get uh, wrapped up in somebody else's thievery. They they were limo driver. The guy was a limo driver. Turns out the guy he was driving the limo for major cr criminal mm -hmm. doing money laundering guys like oh you didn't know i'm also in the money laundering business and uh ends up on this adventure with his fiance and uh it doesn't really necessarily go well for anybody and yet does this is honestly just like an action movie again another right. one of those like classic action movie stories all the tropes are there um but you're still you know engrossed along the way enough that you're like, ooh, what does happen? Are they going to get out of this? Like, how are they bringing this person in? And you can kind of guess most of the stories and then, like, little twists and turns here and there make it interesting still. So. 
I remember this book came out at the same time as Searching for Hugh mm-hmm. or Search for Hugh. And they were so similar in style mm-hmm. that I decided to go with Search for Hugh because I liked the storytelling a tad bit more. Yeah. Um, but this being a scout book, and I feel like every time I see this cover, I'm like, I really want to read this book. Um, so I think this will be a trade. I'll, I'll read this one in trade yeah. for sure. Um, because I, I do like the art and I do like this logo a lot. The yeah. dragon. So, With the dragon as the yeah. she. Yeah. And and it's Scout. And like you said, you can't really go wrong with that. Everything Scout's put out has been great. These are the people who make Ranger Stranger. Like, whatever they do, you're going to probably enjoy. Among many other things. Yes. Uh, the Rush from Vault, uh, this is finally back as well. And that's, again, why I brought it. Because it's one of those that's been delayed for a while. And I wanted to bring it out since we are back. This has been, um, this is issue four. And it has been, the Rush has been a, an incredible story. Um, a woman looking for her child in the West during the gold rush. And, you know, we never really knew, we don't really know what went on during the gold rush. Uh, people went missing, things happened. Um, it was always dangerous. And this kind of gives us a, hey, what if all those dangers were also kind of supernatural and everything is weird and insane. And it's like, you have, you can't trust the people, you can't trust the monsters. And I still don't think we can trust our main character. I don't either. It was one of it's one of those books where the thing that kind of keeps me coming back outside of the supernatural elements, because especially the monsters in this mm-hmm. book look very they're really well drawn. Um, it's that main character because yeah. you start out and you you know it's like the grieving mother who's like, no, I want to find my boy. And you're like, oh yeah, we want you to be reunited with your child. And as the story goes along, you're like, well, I don't know if I want anything good to happen for you at this point. No. Ooh, I don't know if I want to. Yeah, don't look too much into it. And, like, this. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. That looks cool. Even at this point, even the, like, supernatural things are have asked her, like, what are you? Like, even they're, like, yeah. concerned about who this woman is. So I'm more and more invested every issue because. Uh, she, she, I just want to know what she is. I just want to know who she is, what she is, and why nobody seems to, like, trust her. Because as a reader, I don't either. hmm So. Yeah. And that's, I'm more into that than I am the supernatural at yeah. this point. Like, are we going to get some big twist at the end where she's some crazy supernatural entity and you're like, oh, shit. I don't know, but I want to know. Uh, we promised Utopia issue three. This is from our pals at Literati Press. They have two books out this week, so I wanted to bring them both because um, they they are kind of quarterly with when the books come out. Like G- issue four, we promised Utopia won't be out until June. So um, we promised Utopia is all about. It's a three part story. There is. Um, The part in where we see, oh, we need to, like, the world is coming to an end because of climate change. Like, we've really screwed up. We've got to do something about it. And then they start a reality show to figure out, like, to let people across the world come up with, like, the best made plans for saving the world. And then you have the part where they're like, hey, like, the world did, like, it did get bad. Now we're trying to enact these things. And then you have the utopia. Mm -hmm. And you really, as a reader, are kind of trying to figure out if, which which of those worlds is the worst, honestly? Because um, the utopia, as we know, will never actually be a utopia. Like As long right. as humans are in there, as Dracula told us in Rise of Dracula, as long as humans are in it, we're never going to hit utopia. Yeah. And this book kind of really shows us that by centering around like the one the one person who's really trying to stop it, but also is definitely, like, making money off of it because she is the TV production person. Right. Um, and she's championed as a hero in the future world, but we don't really see that as much when we see her in the past. Um, I love that it's got different artists for all of the different yes. time periods, and um, just it's really great storytelling. Yeah, I was making sure I covered all the different art styles because that is one of those things that I do really enjoy. And it helps, too, because I remember in that first issue... I was a little confused, Mm -hmm. and the artwork was the one thing that made me think, oh, okay, we've switched to a different time period. They've also created these little markers that go on the top of the page uh, that are different for each time period. So you can look at the different little marker. Yeah, and and it helps with confusion. Because some of the art, like the two art styles that are similar and like a little similar can get confusing and I love that they have this marker that's on the top of every page that's like oh I'm in this time instead of that time it is it is really helpful yeah I didn't even notice that 
Yeah, and I know that that's a big thing. Like, Charles and I talked about Charles from Literati Press. We both talked about, like, how that's one of those things where you do have the time jump things. It's a lot of times really confusing when you're like, oh, what, what time frame am I in? So right. I love that they're taking the, the time to put that in there and um, do some amazing storytelling. Yeah, and it's Literati Press. We're big supporters of them. Absolutely, which I have to show off. My book, Glamorella's yep. Daughter from Literati Press. This actually is in our kids section if you ever come looking for it because it is an all-star kids book. Um, and this is the story of a little girl whose mother is a superhero, her mother being Glamorella. And uh, and her daughter has, Comet has um, autism. And one of the beautiful things about this is that Charles' son actually has autism. And so he runs everything he writes past his son who is you know, older, I think he's in college at this point, um, or late high school, but he always runs everything past him and is like, how would you respond in this situation? Like, is this accurate or is this a, like, is this offensive? Am I thinking for you in a way like, oh, that's like the cliche, what people think people with autism would respond. Uh, so I love that his sensitivity reader is his son. And also that it is something that being the parent, like he wants to write the story of like mm -hmm. how like this parent who's out there in the public eye constantly, um, you know, feels like they're missing all these, they're missing it. Like they feel like they're not doing the right thing by their child. Um, and that is exactly where Glamorella is at right now. And um, Comet has, her dad is a scientist and Comet has obviously connected with him more than her fame seeking like superhero mother. And I love this issue because it brings together the the girl, like the mean girl at school who's like just into it for Glamorella, like, like, wants to meet Glamorella. She hates Comet, but she always invites her to stuff just so that she can hopefully maybe catch a glimpse of her mom. And then the best friend, who's all about fashion, who has decided to call himself Shadow Ninja and is working as Comet's sidekick as she's trying to solve the problem her mom refuses to take on. And my favorite, I think my favorite line in the whole book is... Uh, they go to the, you know, they go to the science lab and the mean girl from school is like, oh, I get it. Like, is this why you're really smart because your dad's a scientist? Or is it like you got that superpower from your mom? Like, is that one of your mom's superpowers? And Comet turns her and is like, do you want to know why I'm really, really smart? And she was like, yes. And she goes, because I work really, really, really hard <laughs> to be so. And yeah. I was like, I appreciate that so much because, you know, he's just, especially like as kids, it's like, oh, you've got a superpower because your parent has a superpower. And it's like, no, I actually bust my ass to be good at this. Right. Like, stop trying to find like an, a shortcut. Like, just do it. Yeah. And I love that, like, that that was included in there. And if you haven't read it yet, oh my gosh, it's such a fun book. Um, classic like superhero antics, classic kid antics, but just really, really great writing. Uh, shout out to Charles and Jerry Bennett on art because this is a great one uh, from Literati. Also, I just want to say these two books, very high quality paper. Yes. A lot of, uh, I really like this cover, feels nice. Yeah. And, so. and they just told me, Charles was telling me that they got their own uh, like actual printer like oh, comic printer sweet. so they won't have to worry about like some of the delays that they've had in the past like they're actually going to be uh hopefully printing some of the books in-house um, because <laughs> they do have a bookstore and an art gallery up in oklahoma so they're going to be able to print some of their books to keep up with demand well come into the shop get uh we promise utopia three and for your kid Gamarilla's daughter four we have it all four issues yes and we have a lot of signed copies of the issue number ones of all of, uh, oh, okay. of the books from them. So uh, My Date with Monsters issue four. This is from Aftershock Comics. And this is the other Paul Tobin Aftershock book. Uh, if you know Bunny Mask, you know, <laughs> you know Paul Tobin's writing. But this is the story of a mother who... Invented a machine with her husband that kind of brings nightmares to life. And they've started coming out. And now anytime kids, adults, whatever, have a nightmare, that thing becomes real. And it starts harass, like attacking the world. And so she is trying to, at this point, uh, figure out a solution to getting the nightmares back into 
the the dream world and so the government has produced a thing that stops nightmares from happening as long as everybody drinks the water and like takes the medicine and does all the stuff but of course there's a lot of times people don't and so nightmares are continuing to get out into the world and so there is a government agency like the military is now training people just to date this mom because they think like the little if the little girl her daughter who is the main source of nightmares like at this point in the world like if Maybe if she gets over the fact that, like, her dad died and her mom's sad, she'll stop producing all these nightmares. So there's a whole branch of the military that's just the dating section that's supposed to be training to how to, like, date the mom. Uh, really fun book. Really, like, classic, like, Paul Tobin, like, monsters and uh, good storytelling. And I absolutely love the nightmare that is helping her along the way. So if you haven't picked it up yet, My Date with Monsters issue four, come check it out. Better than it. better than Bunny Rose? No. No. We can't we're not allowed to say that even oh. if it was. <laughs> our show will be suddenly removed from the internet if we do say that. Alright, you heard it here. The best Paul Tobin book on the shelves, My Date with Monsters. <laughs> I do actually I think that Bunny Mask is just because we still don't really know what's going on. Also yeah. you get that Andrea Muti art. That's true. Um, That's true. Nine Stones from Behemoth. This one's a little graphic. I don't know if you want to open okay. it. Um, but this is, we're getting towards the, I thought we were getting to the end. I thought this was going to be the end of Nine Stones, but I just wanted, so I originally put it in like, this is the end. Uh, but I do just want to point out that this might actually not be the end of Nine Stones. I can't tell. Um, but it is, is because you don't want me to show off the story. No, I think you can. No, you can. I just there was a lot oh. of graphic pages, so I was saying just check the ones that you do. Let's show the violence. Yeah, so. it's got a, a very anime feel in yes. the way it's drawn. So if you're fans of anime, like honestly, if you told me this was an anime, I'd believe you. Um, and I it would have not. I would not be surprised. I didn't know. Um, but this is the story of a young boy who his dad is the main drug dealer in town, and he falls for the guy that's supposed to be like the other kid that's supposed to be helping him like deliver the drugs and sell the drugs and uh the dad is not okay with the fact that his son is in this relationship with this boy so they both get kind of taken by the dad and things happen and now the son has been accused of a murder and we are seeing him go the go through this process of um his like emotional therapy that kind of helps him deal with it and so we are seeing the trauma and him dealing with it in every issue which is a really cool way to tell the story okay yeah i do like the anime style art and i think that's what drew me to it the first time and then somewhere in all of these giant reading piles it got, lost. It got pulled aside um may i have oh of course. of course some more of this delicious uh de seven deadly uh or yeah seven deadly cab mm. Oh, there we go. This is an aggressive <laughs> it's bottle. It's aggr I love it's the a, way Phil pours wine. Phil pours wine better bottle. than anybody. He's sick because he always overpours. Uh, last session, issue three. This is from Mad Cave. All of my D&D &D fans are not picking this book up, and they are doing themselves a disservice because this is a very great D&D &D book. Uh, if you're fans of Rat Queens... Uh, or the actual D and D game. This is going to be a great one for you. This is the story of a, a group of kids who end up all in one room in a high school. Like they think they're there for some other club meeting. The club members never show up, so they all start talking about how they're playing a D and D, like an RPG. Right. Um, and they end up like, "Hey, we should start a campaign." Now they're at the end of their college years. They're all about to move away and start their careers. And they never finish the game. So if you're a fan of any, like, D&D &D or RPG games, you probably know that that's a very common experience, that you start a game, you don't finish it, everybody gets busy. Uh, and they decide the best thing they can do before they all move away from each other, even further, is to finish the game. But, of course, everything's different now because we've got the one, the Dungeon Master has a girlfriend. And oh, he's no. decided to bring his girlfriend into the game. So throw into the mix also a girl who's never played D&D &D just in the middle of the last run of their campaign. And you get all of the interworkings of group dynamics falling apart and friends, uh, you know, worried about their group and panicking about losing each other. I had a D&D &D campaign end because my dungeon master got a boyfriend. 
See, you know, you know how it feels. she abandoned us. You should actually read this book then. And the coolest thing <laughs> is that they also do it through the D&D story. So, like, half the story is told by, like, the people. And then when they go into their campaign, they still have, like, their arguments going on while they're in the campaign. Which I, I like that aspect. Yeah. Uh, this is Ice Canyon Monster from Blood Moon Comics. And this is, this is... Oh, possibly a one shot, possibly an issue one. Not really sure. This is a this is a crazy uh, book about a group of sailors who are out on the ocean. Something hits their boat. One of them gets dragged Whoa. underwater, and something happens to him, and he is now recanting the tales of the monster that's bigger than the great white shark that lies beneath the ocean. Dang yes. Yeah, it's. The art is crazy, like, the way the monsters are drawn, the way the things are happening. I hope it's not a one-shot, because I actually want to know if there's, like, more of this, like, monster. Um, but for all of my, like, underwater monster fans, this is definitely one. And for people who love, like, that, like, highly penciled art, like, you're definitely going to get that out of this. Yeah, I, just the two pages I've shown... <laughs> is pretty crazy and i've never heard of blood moon comics before this is the first one um i saw it in the back of the previous catalog once again a reminder to check the back of your previous catalog start at manga and read it as if it were a manga go back you know you're gonna get image you know you're gonna get anything image puts out you know you're gonna get dark horse start at the manga work your way back to image look at all those individual books this is one of those like we have one book listed in the catalog and this is it. Read those, because if you don't read those synopsis, you'll never know you want those. Yeah. And I have to order those two months out. So come into the store. We had somebody the other day that said, hey, can I borrow a previous catalog really fast? Sat on the couch, wrote down all the books they wanted out of the previous catalog, walked up and said, I just sent you a message on Facebook with all the books <laughs> I want. And I was like, perfect. That is all I needed. Thank you so much. Everybody could do that. I would be happy. I. It's a... You know, a lot for me to keep up with, but at the yeah. same time, I have a spreadsheet. It does all the work for me once I put it in there. Somehow, a previews catalog falls into my hands every month. I do not give them to him, no matter how many times he will tell you actually, on this show that I do. Actually, honestly, I think the last time, because I didn't see one last month, but the month before, it was it was Matt who handed me one. Yeah, see, not my fault. He was like, oh, there's a new previews. Uh, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. There was a last night toy. Oh, that's what it was. It was because the last one in toy. That's fair. <laughs> and I was that's like, all right, well. yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess I'll take one. <laughs> um, this is Rockstar and Softboy by Cena Grace. Uh, if you've ever read anything Cena Grace, you know that it is the most wonderful queer stories that you're going to get. Like, Cena is just puts all of, like, the queer love and everything into it. And this is two roommates who actually, I love this. They are two roommates who have no romantic attachment to each other. They're very clear about that. And so it's nice because, you know, all the... Anytime you see a story that's like, oh, these two roommates, you're like, they're going to get together by the end. That's not what this is about. This is about two very different people who live as roommates and support each other and are just, like, actually, like, straight up BFFs. And soft boy has not dated anybody in a while and is stressing out about the video game that he's developing because that's what he does for a living and rockstar is like hey we're gonna throw a party and soft boy's like i don't want to throw a party and he's like we're gonna throw a party and they it's so great they even map out like everything you need to throw a successful party and it's like you gotta invite the witches because the witches will keep the bros out of your party and then it's like ooh, and then you've gotta invite the zombies because you know everybody needs some slow moving but yeah fun people to have and then it's like oh and we need to invite this guy because you know sorcerer stew is just the coolest person in town so we gotta invite him and soft boy's like no 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 if you invite all of those people i read it in a history of parties when i was doing my party planning and i read all the books in the library about how to throw a successful party that that's how you release the party animal and he's like that's a myth no no and he's like no 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 you can't do that like we are house is prime for that and uh well let's just say right there you'll see they do in fact unleash the party animal and it causes all kinds of destruction right there. between their party and other people's and uh it's a ridiculous story uh you just have to read it is this um a one and done 
yeah, this is it. Okay. I mean, Cinegrace could definitely, like, make more, honestly. But this this is one solid story. Like, it's all it needs. And it's like, hey, we, you know, we're best friends. We're throwing a party. Honestly, if this is, like, an episode of a TV show, like, and I think he even says, like, this is like, you know, living on Will and Grace and things like that, except they're both gay. Um, it's, it's great. You have to read it. It's just fun. And when you think, like, this has gotten really ridiculous, and I don't know if it could go any further, Cinna Grace is like, hey, guess what? We're about to get extra. And, and it does. And I love it. <laughs> so. I like the art in the book. Yeah. It looks really great. It looks like a fun read. I'm, I'm always down you know, for a party. Yeah, that's that's perfect. I just I the only thing was missing was somebody going like handing out an invitation and going come to my party in like their best uh, Macaulay Culkin impersonation from Party Monster. Okay. Because it felt like all of that. Um, Orphan and the Five Beasts issue four finally. It's I will say everybody so gave long. Dark Horse crap for that. Uh, really? at the retailer seminar this week, everybody was like, Hey, we're going to buy B cell this week. Who knew that was going to take a year and a half to get us the next issue? Uh, I remember seeing it in my box and being like, I forgot this was even a comic. Yeah. And this is issue four. And I believe this is the last of the five beasts that she is, that orphan is supposed to be tracking down. And we see, just an incredible art attack again. This is all. This is some of the most detailed art um, out there. I mean, uh, that was the main reason I picked mm-hmm. this book up in the beginning, um, is because of this art. It's like you said, the pencil work is just damn near impressive on this book, and uh, on it, like it's crazy because I I picked it up this week and I was like, ah, I don't even know where issue three is. I don't even know if I read issue three. Um, and I was like, ah, you know, I'll throw it into a box and get around to it. And then I get like two pages in, I'm like, oh God, I want to read this book again. Yeah. Just because of this art. It looks so great. And it is the story of a, of a young orphan who is trained to battle the five beasts. And we learned in issue one that the five beasts are former students of the orphan's master mm-hmm. who were supposed to go out and defeat evil and instead became evil themselves. And the only hope is that Orphan can take each of them down and bring us back to reality um, and a safe place. And it's just, it's it's classic, like, hey, we got to take down the bad guys kind of story with uh, absurd fights and ridiculous monsters. Um, and it's, awesome. it's so good. Uh, and I didn't realize that I didn't realize it was such a popular title, but like I said, like all the retailers were like, oh my God, it's, this was, this was the Dark Horse book. I, I was in one re- room with um, Dark Horse and two other people, and the Dark Horse sells reps and marketing people, and they were like, oh my god, Dark, like, Orphan and Five Beasts, like, that's my that's my Dark Horse book of the year, and I was like, did you read Dead Dog's Bite? Like, and they were like, oh my god, we forgot, Dead Dog's Bite, okay, and I was like, and then May's book? Like, and they were like, oh yeah, and I did ask, and May's book's not, they, they, we're like, what do you mean a trade paperback for Dead Dog's Bite? That's not even on our radar right now. Like, we've got the hardcover. Doesn't everybody want a hardcover? And I was like, no. I have so many people waiting for a trade paperback. And I know, like, you love your hard paper, your hardcover <clears throat> collections. But I have so many people who just want to, like, beat up their copy of their trade and, like, right. put it in their backpack and take it everywhere they go. And I'm like... I literally am like, I could give everybody a copy of Dead Dog's Bite, and I would still not have given it to enough people in this world. And the, so I'm hoping for all of you who are like, oh, trade weight, Dead Dog's Bite, that might be a hardcover <laughs> collection for the next, like, two years of your life. And it's twenty four ninety nine for a hardcover of Dead Dog's Bite, so if you need one, let me know, and I'll order you one, because I don't actually know that uh, a trade paperback is coming anytime soon, but I did literally beg dark horse for one well dark horse keep putting out orphan and the five beasts i need issue five Mm -hmm. as soon as possible i cannot wait another year and a half no and if you want to keep doing hardcovers they're not gonna stop they said that's their thing you got one person (laughs) who will always be here for the hardcovers yeah and also really don't stop before you put out that maze book hardcover because phil needs it yeah no they they love their hardcovers (laughs) they could not like they were like 
What? People want trade people paperbacks? People don't want hardcovers? <laughs> hey, I, was like, I oh. agree, Dark Horse. And it's I, foolish. I think you were here at the time, and I was like, Phil's going to run in here and be like, she's wrong! We all, <laughs> like, I only want my hardcover. I want a trade paperback of Dead Dog's Bite. Um, the Killer Affairs of the State. This is from um, Archaea, which... I definitely might have been like, hey, where's my additional copies of Will of the Wisp? Um, when Arch- when Boom was like, hey, we got a new book from Archaea. And I was like, what? We're putting out Archaea books again? Will of the Wisp. Give me more. Um, but this is, a, a honestly, truthfully, it's kind of your classic assassin spy book. This is a guy who is a part of a team of people who are spies and assassins and he's been assigned to a case that's kind of like hey you got to follow this guy at city hall but he's got to have the day job where he can work the office and he's not very good at it and he like he thinks he is because he's like hey i didn't like join into the daily conversation today i didn't do this i didn't do that he's narrating the whole time and it's like when it get you know he as he goes along he's like oh i'm standing out because i'm not doing all those things here i am just evaluating all the people and uh, they definitely notice because in corporate america you have to complain about your boss and you have to sit around and be like i'm the only one that works here and you have to talk about who's sleeping with who and so it's it's really kind of cool kind of gives me mr and mrs smith vibes without the couple relationship Mm. like the way uh like angelina jolie goes to like the corporate office like looking place for the spies that you kind of feel like he's in a situation kind of like that and like they have the day jobs and it's like oh how was your day at work today honey like feels like that except there is no couple um so it's just kind of him and he works with these two other people uh, and the one does all the investigating and the other guy's kind of like the guy that's been around for a long time. So this is like you're newer to the, to the job guy narrating the whole thing and kind of just giving you his input while he's also trying to do his blend in and then also, uh, do his investigative work. It's like Mr. and Mrs. Smith meets James McAvoy's character in The Wanted. Where he's like at his like day job and he's like, God, I'm this out. sucks. No. <laughs> this sucks. You cannot be uh, out on James McAvoy. I am in. I could be out on Wanted though. Oh well, yeah, that's why it's just his character. I didn't say the movie. It's not like the movie. It's but you just said like, the movie, and now it's like all I'm gonna James think about when I read it. But with Mr. and Mrs. Smith, like more so. But, I don't care for that movie either. Yeah, just those spy movies in general where they have yeah. the day to day life. Uh, I just you gotta I you gotta appreciate James McAvoy trying to keep his life together in the corporate America, That's knowing true. that he's like this badass assassin, and he's just sitting there like I don't have to take this anymore, and then just beats Chris Pratt with the keyboard. I mean, come on. We all have that fantasy. We we know. <laughs> Uh, The Shepherd, The Valentine, also from Black Caravan. So The Shepherd is an ongoing Black Caravan saga that one issue will come out usually and then a trade. It looks like this one will actually go on to additional issues because it is an ad for issue two in the back. If you want to know more about The Shepherd, you can get the trades of everything. You don't really need to know. It's just essentially what you would imagine The Shepherd is kind of related to, like, steering souls across uh to to the dead world kind of like the specter uh kind of situation in like a dc comic but this is a little girl who is the child of that person essentially and this is her and her brother and they are telling you the story of a little girl who's gone missing in their city and the main girl of the story is like, oh, I really just miss my dad. And I like dad comes and he talks to everybody else and they're all making friends with all these other different people. And I know that they're dead. So, but they say that they talk to them and I want to talk to him. And it's kind of the story of this girl getting the ability to talk to the dead and, uh, really good Did not expect it to go, um, to be as, as good as it is, but I say that every time the shepherd has a story and I need to sort of the trades for myself because every time there's like a one, for, like a starting point for a shepherd book, I'm like, that was so good. And then I never order the trade. So I need to go back and order some shepherd trades, but whether you've read any of the shepherd or not, you can jump in on the Valentine. Um, it's, it's, it's one, it's, it's a whole new character. It's a whole new start. 
And uh, this is, like I said, it does have an ad for an issue two in the back. So this one won't go directly to trade. This will actually have more issues and we can uh, keep going. But there are old stories of the shepherd character that if you want to jump back and just, if you fall in love with the character of the concept of the shepherd from this book, you can go back and read more of different shepherd characters. Well, what is the purpose of this? The you, glowing hand. The, it's the crook. Um, of the like shepherd's crook, and there is a whole point of that in the story that I would ruin if I told you. Because it's very much Lobster Johnson looking to me, with the claw on his hand, the lobster claw. Mm, another number one, sort of. Uh, Please this believe. is this is a one shot called Super Massive, and it is super massive. This is the tie in connecting. This is the springboard. That's a better word for it. For the Radiant Black Universe blowing the crap up. Um, we are going to go from just Radiant Black to Radiant Red. And, oh my god, what is the sun guy's name? Uh, crap. I just forgot. And the other character. So, we are about to see another huge image superhero universe. Rogue Sun, that's his name. We are about to see another massive no pun intended, superhero universe coming from Image, and it is stimming out of Radiant Black. If you have not read Radiant Black, highly recommend. It's a beautiful art, beautiful coloring, great storytelling from Kyle Higgins and Ryan Parrott. So if you're a Power Rangers fan and you're not reading Radiant Black and the world that's about to flow out of it, you're missing an entirely non-licensed version of Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah. Um, Essentially what it is, this is super massive, is kind of going to give you a little bit of a background for Radiant Black, but it gives you, like, kind of like, hey, this is where we are in Radiant Black, also stands completely alone, and launches Rogue Sun and Radiant Red. So if you are, I've had a lot of people who've been like, oh, I want to pick up Rogue Sun, or a lot of people have been like, oh, I'm going to get Radiant Red. But none of them read Radiant Black. So I'm just telling you right now, this is kind of your entry point. If you didn't read Radiant Black and you don't want to go back to Radiant Black, this is your entry point. Are we opening it? Uh, I was going to show this first. Okay. Cause I, Get a nice little, because then, yeah. Because I'll help you, because you're going to need help. All right. All right. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Yes. This was I opened this up for Phil while while I was reading it, and I was and Phil just goes, "Oh shit!" Oh, that's a splash page. This is a splash page. Yeah. I felt it when I was turning the page. I was like, "Oh my god!" There, it's, like it's a nice gonna, little surprise. It's gonna open. Oh my god! It's beautiful. I like buy two copies and hang one on the wall. I don't know. Like yeah. it needs to be a poster. Like it's gorgeous. Um, and that's really honestly and truthfully one of the big selling points for the Radiant Black Universe is this. This dramatic color and uh, that they use that makes these great like poster images. Um, we do have like trades and issues and everything. If you want to go back in Radiant Black, um, they have definitely played with their universe very well. Like there's one point where there was a QR code for like the fake. The guy was like, oh, "I'm gonna start my own merch store. Maybe people will support me as a superhero if I have a merch store." And you could actually like scan the QR code, and it goes to actual Radiant Black merchandise on the internet That's that you cool. can buy, which was badass. Um, and then they did a Radiant Black Light edition of, of issue one of ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the issue was black light sensitive and you could shine your black light on the issue and the whole thing would glow. Dude, it was, it, it has been phenomenal. They've definitely done like their due diligence to just make this like up and up every time. Mm -hmm. And it's a great story. And really where it starts and where it goes are completely different from what you think on like issues one through three. Right. Issues one through three. Like, by the end of issue three, you kind of have an idea, but, like, issues one and two, you're like, oh, okay, I kind of dig this character. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of am interested in where the story's going. And then issue three is like, ha, 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 that's not what we're doing. So, uh, check it out. Definitely recommend. And this is a great springboard. Five ninety nine for that whole thing, I know. Too. Just oh. just for the fold-out, that's worth the six bucks. That's the cost of a poster <laughs> these days. If you go to Spencer still. Yeah. Uh, we've got some some series that came to an end. Uh, Telepaths, issue six of six from AWA Upshot. I actually was talking to the AWA people this week, and they were like, oh, do you guys buy AWA? And I was like, so here's the thing. My story about, talked about AWA so much that our uh, followers of our show started a drinking game. 
<laughs> for every time we mention AWA Upshot, so maybe a little bit. Um, we might have a problem. It's all right. It's, it's okay. okay. It's I'm okay. okay with all of it. Keep but uh, Right. So if you didn't know, there used to be a drinking game for this show where every time we mentioned AWA Upshot, you took a drink. Um, and uh, then we ran out of wine. So <laughs> Telefax is J. Michael Straczynski, but it is not a part of the Resistance universe. Just a fun fact, the biggest part of AWA Upshot is their Resistance Universe. This is not connected. Although you think it would be. Although it feels exactly like it should be. But these people got their superpowers from a solar flare and not from a virus. Um, and they it's a world where they all got the ability to read minds and control things telepathically. And uh, I... Love the ending of this. It definitely leaves it open for a volume two, which AWA Upshot, if you don't know, does many volumes. Uh, they'll label it like one through whatever uh, for the first volume. And then the trade will be labeled volume one. And then the next series actually starts with volume two, number one. So if you are jumping in, they are perfectly labeling things to make it super easy. On uh, Axel Alonso being, of course, the person who like popularized trade paperbacks with Marvel Comics and then starting his own publishing company was like, hey, you know what? Let's actually keep that. That was a big thing that made it confusing for people. So we're going to just right out the gate, make this super simple. Um, so is there going to be a volume two of this? Probably. Uh, very much feels like it could be, but also could also be ending on a perfect modern ending of open enough to leave it that way, but a beautiful ending nonetheless for telepaths. So good job, J. Michael Straczynski. We have all six issues, but it's AWA Upshot. If you want to trade weight, they'll be out next month because they are really, really good at their flip on their trades. And are their trades... Nine ninety nine for every single AWA Upshot trade. That's why I own several AWA Upshot trades because you put them in this pile... And you're like, 10 bucks. I'm like, yeah, right. I'll right, right. So I'll when I mention go. them later, just know that Phil will buy them. Uh, Getting Dizzy also came to an end. This is a boom box title, so it's perfect for teens Um, all the way up. Honestly, this is a girl who uh, gets superpowers to save the world from negative thoughts called negatrixes. And she does it all on roller skates. This is really actually good for any age, um, like eight and up. But... This is, if you're a fan of the new she show, if you're a fan of just, like, happiness, you should just read this book. It is so freaking cute. I loved it. And I always stick it, when I have the big stacks like this, I stick it right in the middle. So after all the other comics have made me really sad or want to, like, punch things, uh, Getting Dizzy gets me back from my, my negatrixes of my own. So thank you, Boom, for just continuously putting out happy, positive books for kids. Because uh, this one is definitely one of them, and you need to read it. It'll just be a happy, like, moment in your day. It's sad that it's only four issues. I know, but most of the Boom Box titles are, like, four I to five. Know. And I just wish that they lasted forever. Uh, speaking of something that did not last forever and ended on four issues, Cross to Bear issue four. Oh, it's already over? Yeah. Yeah. At least volume one. Um... But, I mean, you could easily be completely done with this at this point. Um, this what? is, I, I like know. by the end of issue three, I was like, there's so much story. To I follow. know. And they told it all in this issue. Ex in, oh, my God. There's not a lot of the, like, Knights Templar. Like, I'm not going to lie. We didn't really go more into that. I think that was I just. start there. Okay. Wait. I think they just needed, like, an order for them to belong to to, like, the create connection. the weird loyalties. Because that does come into play. It's like, oh, well, I'm, like. I'm doing this because I'm a member of this. Like, that was just, like, they needed that pure motivation, and that's really all that it was. But uh, this this story, issue four, last issue, definitely comes to a full close. Could keep going if they, you know, wanted to, because you could keep people a lot, like, doing things. Mm -hmm. But Cross to Bear has definitely found... A solution. We've got two brothers who are both members of the Knights Templar. One's moved on from that and moved to the old west of America. And somehow Jack the Ripper has come to America and they must. And they tied that all that. too? They oh, tied how? all kinds of. I don't how? know. Honestly and truthfully, I can't say Marco's last name. Uh, Sjanovic? Sjanovic? Uh, sure. Uh, Marco mastered the four issue like 
completely tying things together. We talk about this a lot, like, with Aftershock books, that sometimes the four issues, like, it's like, okay, you got everything I needed, and then set up another volume to where you can answer everything else. And some of them, like, oh, you missed it. Mm-hmm. You missed it a little bit. You forgot some major key points that you brought in. Marco has managed to make his dialogue tell so much story that he wraps this up really well. It could have made a great, like, movie. Just, like, one full movie. And I'm not going to lie. On issue one, I was like, I'm not in for this. And by the end of issue four, I was like, well done, sir. Well done. So uh, that was a good a good wrap-up for that book. If Dude. you need it, we've got them all. Yeah, I was going to say, do we have all four issues? Cause that's crazy. Yeah. I remember by the time issue two started, I was like, "All right, the journey is now beginning." Yeah. And then issue three hit, and I was like, "Okay, there's no so way. there's probably like two more issues worth of stuff." No, uh, I don't know how they did it, but they did. Um, Redshift. I actually thought Redshift was over, so I put it in the uh, in the over pile only so I could tell people that it's not. Because I thought that Redshift was going to end at issue five, and it now says to be continued. So, and they oh, obviously okay. also planned originally for it to be over, and now they, like, because it's been so talked about that it was going to end in, like, five issues, they had to put to be continued at the end so that people knew. Um, this is the story of, we've colonized Mars, and we've been there for years, and... It's not working out for us very well, and so now we're sending people out on voyages to try to find somewhere else that we could be, and this is specifically focusing on one family. The um, mom went out on one of those missions, never came back. They sent the oldest son out on the mission. Like, they sent him out to another place. He did come back, but it wasn't on that mission, so he refuses to go on that mission, and now they've sent him on. He's, like, ends up volunteering for that mission in, like, issue three because he doesn't want this girl to die. And uh, now he's gone out there, and the little brother has become kind of the golden boy of the military in his place. And this is all family dynamics. Like, it seems like it's like, oh, this is super sci-fi. I'm going to have to care about, like, space drama and stuff like that. No, it is entirely family dynamics for this um, one family trying to figure out what the right thing for them to do is in a political climate that they don't necessarily agree with. And they're all making different choices on how to survive in that. And uh, I was fully surprised when I read this, the first issue, I was like, I have to read it because like I, I got it and it's a scout number one. And I was like, it's going to be just like super spacey and I'm not going to care. And then it ended up just being like, hey, I'm a brother that's trying to protect my family from this terrible thing that happened to my mom. And uh, has continued to be just a great family story. Kind of like how Shadecraft wasn't actually horror. It was just a family story right. within a horror world. This is a family story within a sci-fi world. Okay. So uh, the science fiction is more of a backdrop. Absolutely. To the family stuff. Okay. Um, Out has wrapped up from AWA Upshot. This is issue 5 of 5. This one doesn't really need a volume 2. I don't know that it will get one. This is the story of... Um, some American troops in a Nazi camp uh, during the the Nazi invasion during World War II. And we've got a one of the members of the 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 troop is Native American and he has he is there as a translator. He has learned all the different languages and the Germans have figured out that he can do that. So they bring him down into their pit to work with a monster that they have they have uh, brought into their, they're going to try to use, as we know, like they always talk about, there was like, oh, was there supernatural elements to the Nazi regime? This is kind of like almost vampiric, but not quite. Um, and yet completely vampiric. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Um, and he can speak that language somehow. Yeah. And so he is, the Nazis think that he is using the, his skills to help them figure out how to get this vampire on their side. And, of course, he's not. So we see how this goes. And um, they, this has been, it's it's been like an up and down kind of story. Like, sometimes I'm like, that was really well done. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I see where you're going with this. Um, but it has wrapped up now. I don't know that there'll be a second volume for uh, very obvious reasons if you read this. But we do have issues one through five. And you should definitely check out anything from AWA Upshot. So give it a go. That is the last issue, Nigel. So maybe don't start with that one. Well, <laughs> or it's, do. It's, it's like a Navajo wind talker. So yes, that's kind of what I'm interested really, in. Yes, it's really, that is actually really very much what it is. 
Um, but he's talking to a vampire from, like, ancient times. Um, in his own image from Source Point, this is a new number one. These are the books that you've read, so we're going to jump into this. Go for it, Phil. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about this one. So, uh, this is a guy is going... Okay, so uh, what was that really super fucked up movie that took place in Germany? Hostel. Yeah. Do you remember how Hostel has like a, a group of really rich people who are trying to fulfill super... I, I, can, I, I can't, can't show the inside of this book at all. That. Yeah. Um, so imagine like uh, it's Hostel but in the future and there's new technological ways to torture and fuck with people and this one guy is on the hunt for essentially omnipotence is what he says. He's trying to feel that like godlike feeling of taking the because it basically says that humanity is on the hunt for pleasure like that is yeah. the end goal and he's like i want to strip that away and this book gets really fucked up yeah if you were a fan of red room you're gonna enjoy this book if you're not a fan of red room i don't know you would because that's like that's to me i mean now you don't get the ed piss core art so that's probably what it is and that's that's your thing because you're willing to sacrifice that red yes. room is yeah. very much yeah. just this i look level past the of, fucked up level right because i like because you like ed piss core. this yeah. is that like this is like being in the room when that happens instead of watching it online and like not Ed Piscor's art. So this is like follow you are following the guy who's like trying to like find that violence and enacting that violence himself. Yeah. And it it, it I did not know that that's what this was. Like no. when I saw in his <laughs> image, I was like, oh, this is gonna be some guy who's like trying to like because like you said the God complex. I was like, oh, in his image, so this is gonna be a guy trying to like create something like i thought it was gonna almost be frankensteinian and yeah, that like he was trying bit, to create like a, a hu- humanity in his own image or do something this is not that this is very very violent very like does not get um that does not get not violent either like i was like oh here we go now we're gonna see like a turn in this story and i was like no i could show no. this because it doesn't actually show anything um but i mean it does but this dude totally so it kind of like starts because I had no idea where this book was going because it starts off with this guy who's like at his high school reunion and trying to kill everybody. Yeah, he's trying to kill everybody and he blows this dude's penis off in the bathroom. Um, it's it's super crazy and then it just gets it gets more and more more violent. twisted than that. Honestly, this is a book that I'm not going to read issue two. Because it is a bit too much for me. Yeah, it's too much for me, but I know we have a large amount of people who are like, I really liked Red Room because of how crazy off the wall it went. So I'm showing this still for those people. Um, But also, I still wanted to show it because I don't want you to think Phil and I like every single book. And we're literally just going through them and being completely (laughs) honest with you. This book is violent. And I am not a fan of like gratuitous violence for no reason. And this book definitely... I'm curious to see, because it is source point, so I'm curious to see if there is, like, a point to it in the end. But I also don't want to, Well, based on how it ends, because it also takes kind of a weird turn. really weird turn. Right, which made you think maybe there is a point to it. Yeah, maybe, but I don't know if I need to see that point. I don't know if I need to get there. I don't know if I'm gonna get there, I guess I should say. Yeah, like, if you like, like, ultraviolet stuff... Like Saw and Hostel yes. and like very kind of just messed up stuff. If you are a fan of those movies, you will love this book. Like honestly and truthfully, like yeah. Saw, Hostel, any of those, if you like that kind of like almost torturous like violence, you and I say almost, this is just torturous violence. If you like that, you'll enjoy this. Although I will say, at, based on how this issue ends... I'm not 100% sure if that's how it's going to be the whole series. I don't think it is, which is why I'm like half right. like, oh, I'm going to read us here too to yeah. see. I I'll probably, skim. I'm 
I'm probably going to read issue two because I need to know if I need to keep ordering it, right, honestly right. and truthfully. So I'll probably have to read issue two. And what's going to happen, I'm going to tell you now, is issue two is going to go in a completely different direction. Yeah. And like in a, two weeks from now, <laughs> this is our favorite book. we're going to be like, oh my God. This is our best book but ever. Just know that issue one, you do have to get through a lot of like gratuitous, like torturous violence. Yeah. And we'll let you know. I'll let you know if it if it changes. I almost got up and walked away. I actually wasn't sure I was going to read the whole issue. Yeah, it same. got really yeah. far for me. Um, yeah. But I, I want to believe that there's, like, going to be a turn. But it, I literally, because, like, Matt told me not to read Red Room when Red Room came out. Good to see and you. I almost went up to him and was like, can you tell me where this one goes? <laughs> because I was at the point uh, where I was this. like, I don't know if I can go any further. <laughs> but I need to see if it goes somewhere. And so now I'm like curious to see if issue two because of that turn at the end of the book i'm curious to see if issue two does go somewhere different uh because i it issue the end of the issue might might lead to a redemption for the series maybe, for maybe. me so i don't maybe. know so i'm curious we'll see but you got to be willing to take the violence don't pick up issue one if you're not willing to take violence because i can't promise you that it's not going to get worse yes. step by studies bloody step issue one from Image Comics. That was really hard to get out. Step by Bloody Step issue one from Image Comics. Uh, this is an entirely silent issue. Yes. I, and because of that, I had no idea what was really going on for the most part. Um, this art, I will say, is very spectacular. Some of the... Uh, I'll show the giant first. Um, so it is a girl who doesn't speak. Mm-hmm. And is being carried through this really beautiful world by a giant. Mm -hmm. um, and the giant, as you can see, looks kind of like a knight, maybe. This is Jonna and the Unpossible Monsters for adults. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I really liked it, though. Um, sometimes I can be off... Sometimes the silent issue can be off-putting. Um, because really when you're doing a silent issue, I feel like the art and the action has to be a really strong driving force. And it, it is. is. Cause like, look at this, like this, this isn't the only two page spread no, either. There's lots in them. Um, this book is full of some really impressive art. I feel like this is one of those books where the writer said, Hey, I have this story. Um, but I really want this to be an artist flexing. Um, yeah, there was one more really beautiful two page spread here that I want. Oh, this one. It's this one. Like, it's so simple. There's not even a lot going on, but it's just really well done. Um, I kind of finished this book and thought, okay, I feel like this could be done. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, you do feel that way. It's not. There is more. It's, yeah. And I'm kind of curious if. By issue two, we're gonna start seeing dialogue. I am. I was wondering that too. Like, if she's gonna come in contact with other humans, and we're gonna see some dialogue, um, because it, it's it's Sy Spurrier, isn't it? Yes. So yeah. you know, there's gonna be dialogue. Right. There's no way Sy Spurrier is just writing an all silent <laughs> yeah, that's book. True. Like, that's I don't. True. I just can't imagine that. But, uh, but I would be okay. Like, it's so beautifully done that I would actually be okay if it was completely silent. Right. As as long as I can under eventually understand what is happening because especially in the back half of this issue there is like there's dialogue bubbles but it's in um it kind of almost looks like the hickman x-men mm -hmm. language with the, mm -hmm. the way the letters are done um so i kind of feel like we're heading towards really starting yeah. to have um a bit more of the story but honestly i feel like this is an amazing first issue yes because me being a fan of of the art and that kind of being a driving force oh for God. me um like this nails that and mm -hmm. it's crazy too because all of these two page splashes that i'm showing you are just like it's it's a world like i i'm almost not as interested in the main characters even though i am as much as i am into the backgrounds of this book yeah i have a, a subscriber who who got this book uh before i actually read it and was like oh did you read did you read step by step bloody step and i was like no and they were like well it's an entirely silent issue and i was like okay and they were like and it's beautiful yes and i was like like the art is beautiful and they were like yeah but i mean also the story like this girl just relying on this 
robotic monster type creature to get her through the world and the way that they journey together like it's just it's kind of like iron giant level like you know beautiful story of combination and i was yeah. like ooh, okay well i've already sold and i haven't even read it yet but yeah and there's an interesting little part in this book that i, I don't want to give away but even without the dialogue it kind of was a little eyebrow raising um and it's when the giant takes the when you see the giant without the helmet on yeah and I was like, whoa, wait a second. This is a whole other part of the story that I kind of want to explore some more. Right. Um, but this is a beautiful book. I, yeah. I mean, I would just come into the shop and just flip through it. Again, there's no dialogue. Right. There's Sit no the word bubbles. Like, you read can it. skim through it in, like, the first five minutes. Um, and it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, may I have some wine? Oh, I think that, that it might have been stolen. Do you have ah. it? Okay, you do have it. It was moved further away from me. Okay. I was like, do you <laughs> not have it? Again, we're drinking a Seven Deadly Cab Center Select. And I'm very excited about it because it has been delicious <laughs> so far. Um, all right. There you go, sir. Uh, I did not heavy pour like Phil, so now I'm going to need more wine in like two minutes. It's almost out. Oh, man. Well, that's a shame. It's a good thing there's another <laughs> bottle of wine hiding oh, around. Oh, wait. Yeah. More. But wait. Uh, Bolero issue two. We always try to bring you the issue ones and two, so you know if the series uh, did keep going in a direction. And uh, Phil, you were very excited about Bolero number one. So, yes. how do you feel after issue two? I feel the. <sighs> it's hard to say how I feel because this the first issue kind of set it up as like, oh, this is a typical breakup story. This is somebody going through the emotions that one would have after a breakup. And then it comes in with this like crazy twist at the end about, um, hey, you're able to hop into 53? I think it's 53 other alternate versions of yourself um, and kind of live in their world. Um, and I was kind of hoping that this was going to be like a Quantum Leap style where like every issue is a different hop. Right. And we're going to get 53 issues of, of her hopping into each one. But you don't get that at all. You actually get kind of like a sped up version of that, which was honestly a little disappointing to me and not in a bad way. It's more of just like, I want more of this mm -hmm. in a slower pace. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the page I showed before where she was in space and she's like spacewalking with her her partner and i was like i want a bunch of issues of this yeah and then it immediately jumps into something else and it kind of keeps going um it almost makes me wonder if this is going to be a mini series i was wondering the same thing because i agree i think that there could easily be a million issues like there could be 54 issues of right this. yeah and and we could go to each of the different worlds and we can see our life in a different world and i think i wonder if the writer was like nobody wants to see the same story <laughs> rehashed in different worlds but i would like to tell you that you're Except wrong because uh yeah. phil and i would love to see that yeah. and especially because it does lead to this moment where in this issue where she learns maybe she's hopping for the wrong reasons right and i would have loved for that to be a longer version. Yeah. We talk about this with the Inhumans TV show. I always say the Inhumans TV show, if it would have gotten a full season, would have, like, the things that happened in, like, issue two should have been, like, a mid-season finale. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel like that was, like, for some of this, I'm like, oh, I would have loved for that realization to come as a mid-season finale to right. this comic book. Because I want more. It's yeah. so good. It's not. It's not bad. Nothing in this is bad. It's actually really fantastic. I love. I love the way they set up the paneling. I love the way the story plays out. I love that it's all about cats. I love this girl's terrible relationships and how she doesn't understand how relationships work and she's slowly figuring it out. I love all of it and the fact that like it might not be 53 issues now is disappointing because I want 53. I want 54 issues. Like Let's I got saga 50, this. right. I was like, I got 56 issues of saga. Give me, give me that yeah. many of Bolero. I'll take it. Um, I know that's a lot for an independent creator <laughs> to put out. That's a lot of money to put into it. I'm not trying to make Wyatt Kennedy put that much money into this book, but also I will give you my money. If you, Same. if you continue to do yes. so, 
Yeah, I I agree because this this book has everything. It has a really great storytelling, a wonderful concept, cats. Cats. She's she's a cat owner like the whole time, like, yeah. every time she jumps, she's like, but where is my cat? Yeah. Like, that's, like, she before she even cares about whether or not, like, the humans made it or, like, she can connect to right. humans, she's like, I gotta find my cat. And I'm like, I identify with this character <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, like, my life sucks and I need to move on, but, like, my cat comes with me. Yeah. And it's a great cat, too. It's a, you know, chubby little cat. But um, I really love this book. I think if you were a fan of Carmen mm-hmm. or Many Deaths of Layla Starr, and you're looking for a book in that same vein, I think this is the next best place to go. Yeah, and honestly, it really does feel like a mixture of those two books. That's yeah. great comp yeah. titles. So, um, and if you're not a fan of Carmen and Many Deaths of Little Star, you're probably watching the wrong show. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's what we talk about yeah. here. So, um, yeah. Uh, up next is Distorted Number 1 from Scout Comics. Uh, what do you got for me, Phil? So, this is... A superhero story, yeah, or like a, story? yeah, like super a powered super story. powered story. Um, I have to be honest; I'm not a hundred percent sure what's going on outside of the fact that there are people with superpowers who are starting to cause problems. Yeah, so we've got a superhero universe, and we are following one. We're mostly following one. Kid yeah, I was about who, to say there was a lot of character introductions yeah but our main character is this one teenage boy who finds out that who already knows he has superpowers we find out that he has superpowers he already knows and he has kind of like the ability to control objects telepathically telekinetically i guess i should say and uh that's actually my biggest problem with telepaths was that (laughs) a lot of them are not telepathic they're like telekinesis and all those things and i'm like you should have just called it tell us anyway um This guy has a telekinetic ability to control objects. And while we're following him, we find out that the world has these super, has super powered people. And some of them are not able to control their powers. So there is an agency that's kind of hunting them down to register them. Mm -hmm. And there is a group of people who are hunting them down to kill them. And, we get this this kid who's just kind of a teenager about his powers. Who's he's listening like, to Radiohead. Who's listening to Radiohead. <laughs> the lyrics which, of Radiohead. In it's the issue. lyrics of Creep for crying out loud. Which is great because he does feel... It, it, like, oh, I have a teenager with superpowers who doesn't feel like he belongs. What should we play him listening <laughs> to? Weirdo. Yeah, he's like, I don't belong here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're at that, that's like 10 seconds. That's as much as we get of it before before we get sued for, use, for singing <sighs> rape on the internet. Uh, so, you know, you've got all of these people. You've got your classic superhero story, which we don't really have from Scout. Mm-mm. We don't really have a superhero world from Scout yet, so this is kind of cool to see one in the making. Um, It does feel more like an AWA uh, superhero world than like a Marvel superhero world. Right. um, In that sense. But um, I'm curious because the the only conversation really that the boy has with his dad is the dad comes in and is like, have you made a decision yet? And he's like, I told you I'd tell you when I made my decision. And that's it. And so we know that this world's about to blow up where there's some kind of decision that superpowered people must have to make. But we right. don't know what that decision is still by the end of one, issue one. But we do know that there's people trying to register superheroes and there's people trying to kill superheroes. And this boy has superpowers. So I'm curious to see where it goes. As am I. I, I definitely like the art style. Um, I also like the title. The way the title's done. I knew you were going to say that, yeah. The distortion on the title. And that was kind of what appealed to me at first. But yeah, this is one of those books where I felt like by the end, I kind of had a general sense of what was happening. But yeah. it'll take an, another issue or two to really dive into the backstory of it. Mm-hmm. But the setup is really intriguing. Yeah. I also like the telekinesis of the, the main character. It looks cool with like the glowing uh, tennis ball. I thought that was a really cool concept. Um, so yeah, I, I, big fan of this book. And it is a scout number one, so we will yes. have a delay before we see issue two, because currently they are still doing their two month delay, like, between issue one and issue two. However, 
Uh, a scout did just announce to us, I don't know if they announced it to the world, but I'm going to say it anyway, that scout did just get added to Diamond's FOC. Oh. So because of that, that means that you won't have to do like a two month out order. So congratulations, scout. Yeah. Um, so they said that they might be cutting down some of that wait time between issue one and issue two. Nice. Uh, that the reason they had that big wait time was because it was a two month out order. So they didn't want people to not be able to order issue two with solid numbers of what sold. Mm -hmm. So now that they are going on to FOC, they might actually see some shorter wait times between issue one and issue two, which is really exciting. Um, Sweet. I've been ordering my scout from Lunar recently, so that hasn't been an issue for me, but you know, yeah. congratulations either way to scout. Um, I love them. I will 100% just like support whatever they're putting out. Um, and I'm really excited about all the titles that they have coming. <laughs> we'll talk. Uh, cover of Darkness, from, uh, issue two from Source Point Press. This is your Universal Monsters book. Um, and issue two, we just talked about last week. Why are there no mummies in comic books? And Source Point <laughs> Press was like, hey, guess what? Here they are. So this issue, uh, we still have our main story <laughs> yeah. of our main characters who are like shape-shifting monsters and like Romani people who are fighting against these, mm -hmm. uh, Universal Monster Types characters. Um, but, which I feel so bad given, like, just calling them Universal Monsters. They all existed I mean, before that, but that's right, how you know right. who I'm talking about automatically. Um, and so, yeah, you got your werewolves, you've got your mummies. Well, issue you've one, got, there was Orlock was Orlock in Orlock was in it. Um, um, and, and now we are seeing, um, we're seeing the story of the mummy in this issue. Uh, the, cause we always bounce back to the time to introduce the Universal Monster we're talking about. So, right. while... We are following in the, mo like, not modern time, but in their modern time, the Romani people who are trying to fight these creatures. Uh, we also, our backstory is always a different universal monster. And in this one, we flash back to the mummy and uh, we see kind of the pharaoh himself as he's, you know, driving the people and all the terrible things he's doing to the people and how the people are against him and you mean i mean you literally it's just the universal monster story of the mummy like oh the people are against you like we're going to like yeah. come after you pharaoh and now here you're buried as mummy and now here you get your powers so you see all of that backstory um and it comes with play honestly and truthfully i don't care if this if this book sucks I would never know because it's Universal Monsters. I am an unbiased party on this yeah. book. This book could be trash to you. I will never know if it is because as long as you put the Universal Monsters in your story, I love it. So thank you, Source Point Press, for continuing to just go into my brain and make stories. We made Dracula. We made a Universal Monsters book. We make a book about the Winchester house. I don't know. Source Point is just pulling out what I like dream about at night when I close my <laughs> eyes and turning it into books. Are they every other week now? I believe they it were every two like weeks. It. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it. It seems like they they once they figured out their paper shortage issue for now, um, that they have kind of been every every other week for their titles, um, and I'm here for that because yeah. who, who doesn't need more Universal Monsters? Anymore? Yeah, and the cool thing about this book is I feel like it's it seems like it's ramping up to maybe like a battle of all the Universal Monsters. Or, like, there's two sides of the Universal Monsters. But I really like the art in this book. Um, one of the pages that I showed was of a werewolf bringing a little girl to the vampire. And, like, the side silhouette of him, like, sitting on the throne just looks so cool to me. And I'm like, okay, like you said, this story can suck. I don't care. If you throw every Universal Monster in there, including the Hunchback of Notre Dame... Do We're it, like, do it. Where is that? I feel like we talk about Universal Monsters all the time, and the Hunchback never seems to Phantom make it in those conversations. Phantom and a Hunchback are not in here yet, and that's because um, they, they technically existed before the Universal Monsters movie. Yes. Like, they were technically movies made, like, 
Right. Phantom came before they actually classified them as the Universal Monsters. It's a whole thing. We could go into the history of the Universal Monsters, which we have. Next time. On this, we have on Wind Down Your Weekend, Matt and I have gone into the history of the Universal Monsters before. And don't you worry, Phil and I will probably do it 7,000 more times because some of the greatest creature development of all time are the characters that are in the Universal Monsters collection. Some of the longest running characters, Some of the longest. Too. Absolutely, yeah. And I would love to see them all in there. We always see... You know, the Wolfman and Dracula and, and Frankenstein's monster, who's not in there, actually. This is the mummy, the Wolfman, and Frankenstein, and uh, Dracula so far. Mm -hmm. We have not seen Frankenstein's monster yet, which you know is my favorite. Uh, we haven't seen a creature. We haven't seen Dr. Jekyll. We haven't seen Hunchback. So it's kind of like some of them. We'll see if more come in. Honestly, let's give some it, more creature. I th I, we yes. need a creature in there. Yeah, and I think we will. Because they're really kind of throwing it all at you really quickly. And they're like, how can we fit as many into this little story? Um, right, take your time, Source Point. Make this make this 52 <laughs> issues. I don't care. Oh, Just keep gosh. going. Uh, Just... I don't know how. Okay, 12. <laughs> because the thing is, is like, is it's it's. It was kind of interesting by the time that I read the, by the time I got to the end of the issue, I was sitting there and I was like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed by all this awesome monster madness that's going on. And yet I'm trying to figure out what the overarching story is. Yeah. You know, it and, doesn't have one yet. Yeah. I don't think. Right. Like, mm -hmm. where are we headed with this? I don't really know. There's something with the little girl of the Romani clan yes. that's yeah. going to be that is so far. That's the only overarching story that I've captured is yeah. that there's something because the Romani clan, like a couple of the kids can shape shift. We know that. And now there's something with this little girl, like she is the key to something, but we don't know what she's the key to yet. So they're slowly unveiling the overarching story. While also giving us the backstory to the Universal Monsters that they have included in here. And, yeah, I'm here for it. Keep it going. Yeah. Let's just... Oh, that, and that's our show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> our, our show is just Universal Monsters are awesome. Uh, make more <laughs> stories. Uh, we Ride Titans issue two from Vault Comics. Yes. I was like, it's it's Kaiju. I, I bow down. Go um, ahead. Start with your obsession. Because so, I'm going to hijack the other Kaiju conversation. Don't you later. dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. We will fight for that one. Um, so kind of something that Shannon was talking about earlier with, with Redshift, about it being a family drama mm -hmm. with a backdrop of, of science fiction. That's what you get here, but the backdrop is um, mech suits and, and kaijus. Mm -hmm. um, so in the first issue, we're kind of introduced to this guy um, who's controlling his titan. And you find out he's got a bit of an alcoholic problem, yes. uh, which is affecting his business, uh, which is a family business. Turns out uh, his family and his father and his father before him um, were were all um, pilots of these Titans. And so they have to bring in his even more badass sister. Dude, she's freaking amazing. She is. There's a really great scene in here where she kind of has a little back and forth between her dad. And I'm like, yeah, you tell him. You tell him. Um, I might be in love with her. Like, it's like her and Erica Slaughter are, like, vying for the love ooh. of my life right now. Uh, because they're both badass women. I mean, if she had 24 issues, she'd probably, like, right. get to where Erica is. But I'm just, these are just badass women in comics, like indie comics, that need to fall in love with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would agree. I would I would definitely you know, be in a relationship with this, <laughs> with this girl. Um, yeah, I'd be very submissive, I feel like, in that <laughs> one. Because she is a total badass <laughs> in every way. Um because like especially too, I love the kind of the one of the first scenes in this book where her dad comes in and is like, "All right, ready to go," and she's like, "You're just waking up," and she's like doing push ups. She's doing push ups off her bed, yeah. and I was like, I was reading it on the couch in the shop, and I was, I was like, like, "I'm gonna oh. start. Should I start doing push ups right now?" <laughs> like it's like when, when you watch the Olympics and you're like, "Should I eat my nacho chips or should I do a workout yeah. while I watch this?" It's like the same thing when I read this comic. Um, yeah, and this is, I mean, this is one of those creative teams that's really gay. You have Sebastian Perez, you have D kind of. You uh, have D on colors. Yeah. If you know me, you know yeah. D is my favorite colorist, like, possibly in comics right now. Yeah. Um, and, oh, God, yes. So this is, and with this story, you're kind of getting 
um, her getting back into the swing of things. But then at the end of this issue, they kind of throw a nice little curveball in here that makes it really interesting. Um, again, it's Kaiju's, so I'm already on board. Um, but I do really feel like this is going to be one of those family dramas. Well, and the tagline for this book is Kaiju hit hard, family hits harder. Yes. And I'm like, I'm you've got me. You got me on the tagline. It's a terrible tagline. It's a great tagline. But I'm in. It's great because it's true. You're like, because exactly what you said. Like, I get all of that. Like, this is a family drama. Like, it's, yes, there's going to be some Kaiju. But, like, the real kick in the balls is that family sucks. Yes. And like it, and it's they nail it every time in this mm-hmm. book. So it's so good. I'm so glad because Vault was having their paper shortages, and I was like, we're never gonna see me write Titans number two. I was nervous about that when you were talking about that. We yeah. did, and now here we are, and uh, it was worth the wait. And yeah. give me issue three right now. The tagline makes me think of Fast and Furious. Right, yeah. it is very, and honestly, like you could like. Fast I wouldn't be shocked Furious, if Vin Diesel shows up. Fast and Furious and like Pacific Rim, like blend yeah. them together, and yeah. you get We Ride Titans, except with better. I want writing. there to be a moment though where like she steps up in her Titan next to his, and they do like the cheesy like for family, <laughs> and then like that song plays and the, the Wiz Khalifa song plays in the background, like if it's you know I'm here. For it, if you like, I don't even care about the Fast and Furious franchise, but you know How they use that chance. ridiculous like they <laughs> use that first movie footage of of uh of what's oh my god Paul Walker like driving next to Vin Diesel <laughs> from the new movie it was like it was eight? like new Seven, movie I think it was eight. Yeah, they had, like, yeah. new modern footage of Vin Diesel driving next to, like, original movie Paul Walker <laughs> to, like, have them say goodbye. And you got the, like, Wiz Khalifa And they drive off in several and ways. And they go in separate directions. <laughs> and you're like, that's so sad. Why am I Oh, crying? I cried. Why am I, I cried crying a lot. right now? Like, and you, you can't stop yourself because it's just, it was so emotional. And I was, that came out, like, and I was like, this is the second time that Vin Diesel has made me cry over family in a movie because we are Groot. Let's be honest. We all <laughs> cried. We all cried. Vin Diesel secretly has the the keys to everybody's heartstrings. Uh, he definitely does. Uh, Salty Seductions of the Salacious Seas. Phil picked this up and was like, <laughs> Salty Seductions of the Salacious Seas. Oh, my God. I, I, thought like, it, I thought it was a smut magazine. I was like, read it. Read it. Like it sounds magazine. like a smut book. It it's, does. It does. And it's not. And it's not at all. Not it, it, at all. It, this is like Night Janic kind of secret title, yeah. like, like leads you into a book that has nothing to do with it. But this is an all black and white book mm-hmm. about a female who is kind of a reporter, kind of a detective. Um, and she is investigating something that's going down in a town where people are disappearing and they don't know why, but she only goes to, to investigate in situations where there's something supernatural. Mm -hmm. And the guy that goes with her, um, is, is the one that comes up with the fact that like she should write them as more engaging titles and says, you should call this the salty seductions of the salacious seas. Yeah. And she's like, that's a ridiculous title and nobody will ever publish my work if it's called that. But it is the story of them figuring out what is going on in this seaside town and solving this. And literally when I opened it, I was like, I don't have time for this. And then I read it and I was like, I had all of the time in the world for this book. Oh my God, this was ridiculous. And I kind of enjoyed all of it. Um, I was kind of disappointed because when I saw this title, it took me back to like... Um, all the like weird romance novels my stepmom would read and they had titles very similar to this um so i was kind of disappointed that it wasn't more of like trashy romance but i did really enjoy this book surprisingly like uh, i enjoyed the story i like the characters uh lord harwood is is hilarious like <laughs> yes, he's he such is. a funny character oh um gosh. So yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. It is a one shot, however, mm-hmm. I feel like this isn't going to be the last. No, I of feel like we'll, we'll see multiple one shots. Yeah, because it says that it's a Miss Tilney adventure, mm-hmm. so I think we're going to get more. And I think that at some point, based on like the cover and everything, we are going to kind of get a little bit of that trashy romance, oh. but not right off the bat like I wanted. No, and and I'm kind of okay with that. So. So my my first book what that had like 
literary attention was a, a YA romance story. Obviously not smut romance. And but I got invited to a romance convention to like speak. And so you know how con rom con? Rom con, yes. Uh that's beautiful, Nigel, and I'm mad that they don't call them that. Uh, we need to rebrand immediately. Oh my god. <laughs> We've lost Phil, and I'm so excited because that was so beautiful. Oh. Nigel, that is the best marketing thing you have ever done in your life. Thank you. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, so Someone write that down. Somebody Someone write, write it right. Is it recorded? In fact, none of you write it down because we're going to write it down, and we're going to do that. Uh, but... So they hire, so, you know, you have all your con after parties when you go to conferences, like there's all the like, oh, tonight's theme party is this or whatever. So they had a party and all of the parties, they invite the models from the covers oh my to gosh. be at these parties. And like the women are just like, oh, it's my turn to dance with you. And like, they're all out there, like trying to like steal the models from the covers. And so... It's so funny because none of those men look anything like the covers in real life. They're like opposite end of the spectrum from that. So when I, I saw this cover and then you go into it and Laura Hardwood is kind of like a disastrous drunk. I was like, this is exactly like a romance novel to yeah. me now. Like it's like, I've been there. I've met these like these romance novel, like model covers. And I was like, no, this is, accurate and i, I love want to meet this, this guy though <laughs> um this was it was it was so good i was pleasantly surprised again source point you're just you're just pulling out all of the things i'm thinking in my head and turning them into comic books so keep it up um lastly from hot new titles vault comics is reprinting heathen heathen was a big vault title um back in their first year which Comic book news we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, but or I was going to talk about a little bit later, but we're just going to talk about it now. It is the five year anniversary of Vault Comics this year. Hey. Uh, I I think that they are. They said uh, literally like this week um, is is five years, um, and so Heathen is one of their very first titles. So they're doing a Vault Collector reprint of all of the single issues of it, and they're all foil comics so don't buy this one because phil and i have been touching it and you don't want it but they're all this like glossy like foily cover um i never read heath and i didn't know who vault comics was five years ago the um really right i wasn't reading any comics five years ago um i wasn't really i i was in that like 2016 i guess was six years ago that's kind of when i came back into comics and mm -hmm. i was 2017 I was just starting to like catch up with like what was going on with image and like slowly getting into like the smaller presses from there and um so I, I didn't I didn't read vault in their first year so I never read heathen and I am so freaking glad this honestly is a perfect segue into picks of the week because I'm so because this is honestly a pick of the week for me mm. um I'm so glad they're reprinting this because this is a phenomenal heathen is great this is the story of Two stories in one, I guess. This is the story of one, uh, a Valkyrie who refuses to play by the rules and gets outcasted from from their world. And she is now put her, like, is punished by saying she has to marry somebody. So she comes up with all of these terrible like task that somebody would have to overcome in order to even get to her to marry her. And then we've, Fast forward into, well, not really modern times, but into Viking times a little bit further. And we have a woman who is kicked out of her Viking community because she kisses a girl. And she is like, I'm not going to back down. I'm the best freaking warrior we have. Who cares if I'm a lesbian? And now the gods are nervous because she has decided that her quest is she is going after the Valkyrie and she's going to take on the challenges. And this is the most, like, this is really, again, that you could just flat fast forward to picks of the week because this should have honestly been in there. But I forgot this book was in our stack. This is uh, all of the female power about, like, screw you, screw your oppression, school, screw your rules. Uh... I hate you, like, Odin and all of your shit. I am going to just go after what I want. 
And what I want is this amazing Valkyrie woman. Neither one of us are going to back down to your stupid rules, society, or uh, male oppression. Like, hell yeah. I'm so glad this is getting reprinted. I'm getting every single issue of this. This is definitely a pick of the week. And you get these cool foil covers. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Um, So I actually kind of got lucky and stumbled into Vault uh, early on. They had uh, Heathen, uh, Wasted Space. Mm -hmm. And, which is still going. Uh, yeah, which is still going. Um, and then the, uh, Alien Bounty Hunter was the mm-hmm. other one. Um, so I actually, this was kind of like in the days where I was like, I'm going to buy and sell comics. And I bought this collection and one of the short boxes was like all these indie books. And it was a bunch of the early like Frendo, Queen of Bad Dreams, like all these early vault titles. And so I, I had a full run of this at one point and was like, ah, oh, wow, this is actually really good don't spoil it for me because i don't know <clears throat> no where it goes. Uh, okay. yeah i'm not i'm not gonna say anything but in all honesty and um uh one of the wassel brothers said this in one of their whatnots is that this is probably his what he considers to be the best title that vault has ever put out um and i would actually kind of agree with that was it adrian of, or damien i'm just curious which one it was adrian i that sounds right adrian's the editor adrian. so <clears throat> yeah. um and also, if you can, go online. They, I think they're in CLZ, but look at some of the early variant covers. Because Vault was making some really, really cool variant covers back in the day. And still are, actually. Yeah, and and Vault <clears throat> is going to be doing some incredible things this year for their five-year anniversary. Um, I got to like hear Damien speak, Damien Wassel, um, who is like the president of Vault. Uh, I got to hear him talk about some incredible things that they have planned. Um, Adrian talked about some of the great stuff that they have like editorially coming. Uh, it's going to be a great year for Vault fans, which of course we are. I talked to the sales rep from Vault and they've got some stupid, amazing stuff planned uh for this year i'm so excited this is going to be a great five-year anniversary Mm -hmm. for uh honestly one of my favorite indie indie publishers yeah and i think they've only gotten better i mean there's so many vault titles that are just so amazing and yeah i'm happy that they're only improving Mm -hmm. um i know one title in particular fox and hair that's coming out this year um, I've seen previews for kind of a futuristic cyberpunk style comic. I got um, a full rundown of that book. It is going to be so freaking good. The previews that I've seen of the art mm-hmm. looks really great. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I listened to Adrian talk on their whatnot, um, they were doing an auction and he was just every book he was hyping up. And I was just like, oh my God, I want everything. Please. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm also like, I need t-shirts for this series and this series. And and they have great merch. Yeah. Vault always has your merch, like, available for your series, like, the same week. It's like, like, Barbaric launched on Wednesday. And by the next Tuesday, our subscriber and buddy Max already had a shirt for it. Like, it was right. out that Wednesday. Yeah. Like, the merch was up the same day the book launched. He read it ordered it and already had it on his body on Tuesday. <laughs> and I was like, dude, vault. And we've got, you know, Matt and I've got like autumnal shirts. We've got uh vault shirts. We've got my vault <clears throat> imprint shirts. Yeah. Like it, they have some of the best merch in the comics game. Like, especially like indie wise, probably the best merch. Yes. Um, like yeah. absolutely. And it's that quick turnaround time. Like they are killing it mm-hmm. on the merch game. Um, absolutely 100% freaking love, uh, all of the things that Vault is doing. They've never, they've never let me down. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. So, uh, Heathen is the start of our picks of the week. I feel like it was like in the mix of both because it it is a reprint. Yeah. But like, it's my first time reading it. So for me, it's definitely a pick of the week because I, I'm like, Hey, it's new to me. It might be new to you. Reprints are a great way to get into it and foil collectible like covers. And I can't wait. Uh, and so 
Uh, I think that Matt and Nigel really enjoyed uh you know, the, the book that we were like it's super violent, okay. and it's, they both are like awesome. it's. It was, I was like, I was like, this is not that, that bad. Was like, great. Like, okay, so here's the thing. The I, ending is great. I like yeah. the ending. I was thinking the whole time that we were saying how fucked up that book was. I was like, Matt's gonna love it. It's gonna be Matt's favorite fucking book. We were talking about in his own image. This is uh from Zoys Point Press. Phil and I were like, ooh, it's super violent. But, we just spent 15 minutes on it. Why are we? But but because we were saying they liked it. So yeah. except for people who. Just joined in. Second week. In, in his own image. <laughs> no. <separate> no. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt loves. You don't get that choice. <laughs> but Matt loves loves all the violent well, movies that say something. I and like it revenge. is. Yeah. Right. And the re- and that's the thing. We were trying to okay. leave out. We were, we were trying to leave out that yeah, part. We were because the to... ending is a good twist. And yeah. I definitely think. That's why I'm interested in issue two. Because I want to know if in its own image is going to give me more in issue two. Or if it's just going to go back to somebody else's like torture I'll, I'll let Matt thing. tell me all about it yeah issue too. Yeah, no. we'll see no. well you only read you, the one book you didn't so know <laughs> I did no I got uh, to read House of Slaughter oh yeah and I didn't even bring that with me which is definitely a pick of the week I uh, forgot that that was this you week and not last week yeah there's one right there actually grab me the one specifically that's right there because that's important uh, thank you uh, we're gonna talk about that in in stock in a minute because oh, I don't okay. need to tell you that uh, that happened. Christmas Car- was Christmas Caroline. Yeah, Christmas Caroline. This is an annual. Comes out once a year, and it was delayed obviously because it wasn't out at Christmas time. But this is from Source Point Press, and they'll tell them why it's book of the week. Well, um, if you want, okay, let me say this: if you are a fan of I Hate Fairyland. Yes. Then this is the book. Then for you. you are a fan of this book. This is automatically your favorite book of the week because <laughs> this is about uh, Caroline, who is the an s- elf. Yes, who is an elf that was uh, kicked out mm-hmm. of the North Pole, mm-hmm. and has decided that she is going to kill Santa. Because yeah. why, Phil? What does she call him? Can I say that? No, you okay. can't. <laughs> I thought about it. I was like, no, I don't think you can, actually. Like, she calls him a lot of things. Are you giving me can. permission? I'm not. Now that I think about it. Uh, I was just thinking we were talking to Nigel directly, who's falling off the couch in excitement. So, like, no, like you cannot actually say it on the internet. Facebook will pull our video. Uh, but for that... Just just mouth it? No, because Facebook will pull our video. But you can see it. Nigel is full okay. holding <laughs> Uh, she hates Santa, and it's wonderful. And uh, <laughs> uh, so it's great. It's great for anybody like Phil, who's like Christmas is like definitely my least favorite holiday. This is kind of gives you a book that's gonna come out every year. That's not like it's a Wonderful Life about Christmas. This is like, <laughs> hey, Christmas is you know Christmas is fine, but we suck at what we've turned it into, and Santa is a big part of that. And it's fun. Look it's like that. you said. It's an I hate fairyland kind of thing. Uh, it's it's a fantastically fun story that everybody should just pick up and read. Yes, I agree. I will say though, if you would be triggered by um, elves being brutally murdered, do not read this book because <laughs> there's they... a lot of elves that, that <laughs> bite. I'm twenty percent elf, so <laughs> well, <laughs> you're gonna be twenty percent disappointed. <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of murder. Yeah. Of the elves. But yeah, I, I mean, it's it's such a fun book. Um, it looks like it could be a kid's book. It is not. It's not. Mm. Do not give this to your children based on the fact that we can't even say what she calls Santa. Yes. On our live stream should be a sign. It is not for children. This is just like... But... I Hate Fairyland is not really yeah. for children. This is not a thing. If you invite me to your Christmas party this year, I will put this in your kid's stocking. <laughs> this is a secret Santa gift. Yes. For sure. <laughs> um... Quad is back again. This is from Behemoth. Our only Behemoth? No, Nine Stones came out this yeah, week. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. I got nervous that we didn't have a lot of Behemoth. Uh, we <clears throat> talked about this last week, I believe, that Quad is the... Um, it's it's different stories. It's an anthology of people who live in a post-apocalyptic world where uh, things are not going so well. We have... I'm going to need some more wine, too. Oh, thank you. Um, Thank you. You're so kind. Uh. But it's it's different stories from different people within this post-apocalyptic world. Right. Last week, we talked about a girl and her cat. This is all about 
Ghost War Exorcist, Ghostware Exorcist, sorry, Trent. He is a robot who is responsible for making sure that other robots don't go bad and start killing people. And I read this and was like, oh my god, I can't wait for you to read this film. Yeah, so the, the thing that was really appealing to me, one, I really love this character design of this mm-hmm. main character. He looks great. He's kind of got the, like, Terminator leather jacket look. Um, that just immediately appeals to me. It looks great in black and white. Um, but yeah, so basically the whole thing is he's a detective and his goal is to exercise ghost viruses and it's a way for these viruses to kind of overtake robots and have them kill people. And the cool thing that I liked about this issue is it fits into the same thing as iRobot. Right, we follow Asimov's rules of robotics, well, yes. and we mention all three of them in here. Yes, and then of course you realize that eventually those laws are going to be broken. Um, and you you kind of get to see a little bit, you get to see one story of how that happens. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, and also it's just cool because his name's Trent. And the story was really good. Yeah, so with, it really was. With the last one, I was like, this is kind of, this is a good story, but I, I want to see where it's going. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, you know, like it's missing a little bit. I kind of want to, like, it didn't really have an ending. And like, I kind of just want another issue just so I can see what happened to the cat. Right. Like, honestly, to the last, ish, last squad, I was like, I just want to know what happened to the cat. Uh, but if I could say full give me mini series or more of Trent, like yes. if I could specifically go in and yeah. say which quad do I want more of, I was when this it's was over, Trent. I was like, when do I get another issue of Trent? Like now I'm mad that I'm getting a quad issue that's not gonna be about Trent next. Mm-hmm. Like and we were talking about this at the retailer summit. A lot of retailers were talking about how quad was one of their books. They were like, This is my behemoth book that's drawing me into Behemoth. And they were like, it's probably gonna be when you get to the end, like, they're going to introduce four characters, and then there's going to be, okay, now the four are coming together, and they're going to tell a story. And I hadn't read this one yet, and some of them were like, this week's was really good. And now that I've read this week, I'm like, screw the other characters, just give me a Trent series. Yeah. I just want a Trent series. It's so good. This should have just been the story. We should have just had Ghost Square Exorcist Trent. I agree. And I'm kind of hoping that we definitely get more of him. Because I do feel like when we finished the last one, which is Tara and Elvis, Mm -hmm. I kind of felt like when we got to the end of that issue, I was like, I kind of want more of this. Yeah. Like, I need to see where these characters go. Obviously, the the cat I need to know more about. I need to know what happens with the cat. Um, But now, like like you said, like, now that I've read this, I just want this. I just want this. I'm like, I'm literally finished it and was like, well, now I don't know if I like Quad because now I have to go talk about somebody else. And I just want a Trent series. And I almost texted you and was like, I need a Trent, the Ghost Wear Exorcist series. And then I was like, he hasn't read it yet. He's not going to read it until tonight. And then I was like, I can't wait for you to read it, though, because uh, Trent, Trent is my dude. My dude, Trent. If there's one thing that you can do for me this year, action figure. Ooh. I want a Trent action figure. Because <laughs> he looks awesome. You yes. can see that on cards. He's like, Trent? Right. <laughs> like, Oh, Ghost well, it's going to say Ghostware Exorcist yeah, there you go. Trent. That's right. And that's going to be that's the appealing job. part. Yeah. Um, Ghostware Exorcist. Yeah, no, I'm sold right there. Right. Yeah. Ghostware Exorcist is a fucking badass title. We need Trent the Ghostware right. Exorcist to be a full-on series. Order now. Yes. Trent for Ghostware More of Exorcist. This. Reaction. Go with the reaction stuff. Yeah. And no, the- Amigo, where he's got all the <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend picking this up. And mm-hmm. you don't have to have read the other one mm-hmm. to read this one. Um, like you said, there's a chance they're all going to come together in the but end. But they haven't yet, so keep um, going. So yeah, I would pick this one up. And this honestly gives me hope that the next time issue three comes out of Quad, we're going to be like, okay, we yeah. want it, Trent. Well, now we want yeah. this character. I feel like more of this character. If, if um, it keeps escalating the way it is, because we said that at the it's end, been tough uh, about this but role. yeah, it's written and drawn by the same guy. Yes. Yeah, you, uh, Luisio Santos. Santos. You probably should have saved Trent for the end because, like, now you got a really high bar to top. Yes. I thought the cat was higher to top, but Ooh, and I'm, we're cat people. We're cat people. I thought the cat was going to be impossible to top, but now that you made Trent, yeah. you know. Um, 
fictionized. <laughs> Issue one from from Stonebot at Red Five, who you may know as the publishers of Mega, one of the best books of twenty twenty two, or possibly Phil's favorite book of twenty twenty two. It's definitely my favorite book of twenty twenty two. Well. There's another book that's about to come up in a second that's going to be a top contender for that as well. Um, I have to say, between Mega and Fictionauts, I, Stonebot... Is possibly on your top five publishers right now? Yeah, let's start talking, Stonebot. Let me get these, um, let me get pre-orders, let me get some advanced copies. Uh, so Fictionauts is kind of, um, ah, what's the DC property? Challenges of the Unknown. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you kind of get like a sciency superhero team, uh, but this is a team of four who uh, travel around and alter fictional stories that are about to go wrong. Yes. Um, which is a brilliant concept. This is my shit. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> um, and it's really cool. They start out with uh, Moby Dick, which is cool. Um, and this is very pulp. Like, yes, very, yes, very, 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 very pulp. pulp. Um, which is amazing. It hits all of those, like, pulp tropes that I really want. Um, they're a TV show, mm-hmm. uh, which is really great. Um, there's a character called the Rainbow Racer. And there's this whole, like, alien sci-fi kind of thing attached to it. You're introduced to a villain mastermind. Mm-hmm. Um, you get kind of a backstory. One of the characters on the team is a fictional character from, from a, a Dickens. Charles Dickens short story that somehow found a way into our world and cannot be harmed by real world stuff. Um, and it's, it's, it's everything I didn't know I needed in a comic all in one comic book. And yeah. we've been getting a lot of collections recently of, of trades that are all the, the pulp classics and the mm-hmm. pre-code stuff. Yeah. And and this was this was an absolute great like addition to that world. I was like, oh man, like even with some of the like the like DVDs we've been talking about and stuff like the movies we've been talking about and shows we've been talking about this week, I was like, oh, this falls right in line with how our exact week has been going, and everything in this, like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is both ridiculous and wonderful. And then I turned the page and I was like, no, wait, this is ridiculous yeah. and wonderful, <laughs> yeah. and like. As serious as League of Extraordinary Gentlemen takes itself, this is like if you made that into a pulp story. Yeah. Because you've got all the fiction worlds that we're diving into, but they're not the fictional characters. Yes. They're going into the fiction world. And the whole time they're like, they're they're going off of a book, a book that tells them all of the information they need for like where they're going to go. And they open up the book and like the big problem of the series is that they open the book and the pages are empty. Right, and it's like, pages. well, what do we do? And 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 now they're starting to see that, like, oh, well, you know, we tried to do this, and this came out blank, and so that's kind of our, you know, uh, connection to our villain. That's kind of the big problem that we're going to see in the series. And I actually right. had to look it up. I was like, is this a pulp comic that that Stonebot brought back? And no, it's they just started right here, and. <laughs> They have sea monkeys. Richie, I don't know if you're still watching, yeah. but they made sea monkeys <laughs> characters. Like and it's great too because the story that they tell is that sea monkeys originally tried to invade Earth by being brought into every American home, but the fresh water was too <laughs> deadly for them. What? So they retreated to the ocean. It's so great. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I, every time I was like, oh man, what are they going to do with this? Yeah. They went there. They went as far as they could and <clears throat> I'm here for it. So, uh, Fiction Knots, definitely pick of the week and Stonebot pick of the week in publishing, like joys of like new publishers that you need to be watching. Ooh, if you're not on my watching, radar. Yeah. if you're not watching Stonebot, you need to, it's a, it's a imprint um, of Red 5, which you need to be watching Red 5 in general because they are going to be heating right. up really fast. And uh, with Mega as a part of their collection, if you are not, I can tell you that that is another one that I brought up to a bunch of retailers this week. And they were like, the the ones who had read it are like, oh my God, you're not reading Mega to everybody else. They were like, that is the most beautiful book. It you is have the to, most you need to be book reading I'm that book. Right now, so, so. so Red 5, publisher to watch. They're going to grow really fast and their stone-bought imprint is going to be what really leads the way for them. Yes. They, um, they have kaijus and pulp. Right. It's like stuff that I love. It's same there. It is a publisher made just for Phil. But speaking of books made just for Phil, 
Heavy Metal Drummer came out this week. Yes. Firm for Derm, indeed. <laughs> Heavy Metal Drummer number one by Behemoth. By Behemoth, Texas publisher. Yes, there you go. Uh, I was like, cause, yeah, because we were like, do we have another Behemoth book in here? We did. I knew um, that the whole time. I just was, didn't want to spoil the fun. Um, What do I say about this book? What? What can I say about this book? Everything you think this is, it's not. And everything you uh, are going to think now that I said that is still wrong. See, I want to compare it to something, but I don't want to at the same time because it gives away yeah. kind of where this story goes. Um, it features a heavy metal drummer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, barely. <laughs> Congratulations on the most obvious uh, connection. Uh, cocaine. Cocaine. Cats. cats. Yes, cats. Multiple um, cats. Uh, drugs of some sort. And, um, and a really detailed penciled cartoon art. Yes. And bright body colors. Horror. Yes, body horror. Um, <sighs> I mean, whatever you show is going to also give stuff away. Heavy Metal Drummer is one of those books really that, awesome. that like, full, hmm? like flew off the shelves this week. And I was like, I don't know how people are hearing about this, but you're not wrong. Like, it was the book that I read on Tuesday night when I got the, I was doing the shipment. And I was like, oh, man, this isn't going to make it. It's not going to, once people open this book up, they're going to buy it. And people would, like, I'd he, see people open it, and then they'd come up to the counter with it at the top of their stack. And I'm like, that is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. You couldn't, it, it's, it's ridiculous in every sense of the word. And wonderful <laughs> all at the same time. All right, so here's why it is, it's my pick <laughs> of the week here. Because you have this page... Right, so it's this page, and then the very next page after that is this, and that is beautiful. Yeah, that's that's, the, that's the this I, like, and I even had one of those moments where I verbally was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, because it changed drastically. I heard all of your reactions. My favorite thing is when you read the comics here because I get to hear your actions. I heard all the laughing, and then I heard you go, "Whoa!" And I didn't even have to come in here to be like heavy metal drummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Nigel said, hey, what's one book that I can read real quick? And this is the one I gave him. And then added like, it to his fuck? sub list right. immediately <laughs> after. Thank God. <laughs> immediately after was like, I put Heavy Metal Jumper in my box. I need that series. And I was like, I know. I, everybody does. There, Anybody who bought it this week is going to subscribe to it. Yeah. I'm just going to assume yeah. if you actually read your copy of Heavy Metal Jumper, you're going to subscribe to it. If you didn't. This is one of those behemoth books to pick up. And again, like Stonebot, Behemoth is a publisher you need to start no, watching. Oh, yes. If you're not already about. watching Behemoth, you're a little bit behind. Catch up on the Behemoth train because it's it's full in force at this point. Yeah, but I I mean, this is definitely going to be one of those top contenders at the end of the year when I go back and talk about my favorite books. Um, and it's also going to be this art. Yeah, I and mean, the colors. You get me in those pinks and purples every yes, time. Yes, yeah. And I... The thing that I reference this to, and I'll talk about it afterwards, I don't want to spoil anything, but it fits everything that I love. Yeah. So I, I, I highly recommend it. I think there's only like two copies left on the shelf here. Yeah. Um, if you right, have your copy, if you want to. Yeah. If you haven't grabbed a copy, I, I, you need to. Yeah. Definitely. Um, the last book, I have to tell the story yeah. before I show it. Okay. So. One of our subscribers came in and said, hey, do you have any more copies of X uh, Lives or Deaths, whichever one it is, of Wolverine this week? I was like, no, I don't. But can I interest you in a copy of King Jira number one? It's a one shot from the scout. And he was like, what? And then he looked at it and then he opened it and goes, you know what? This is a better choice. You're right. So I would just like to say this has nothing to do with Wolverine, but I completely sold somebody on this one shot who came in for Wolverine because they opened the book. So Phil, open this one shot from Scout Comics called King J King Jira and show them why. <laughs> this fucking artwork. <laughs> this book is another silent issue for the most part. Uh, Hungry Like a Monster is the subtitle. It has some of the best art, uh, especially if you are a fan of that classic cartoonist pencil work. Uh, and it is the story of an overweight kaiju 
who only wants to eat pizza from the pizza store. And everybody thinks that he is attacking the village, so the military is attacking him as they do kaiju. And he is very upset because he just wants to get to the pizza. Yes. It is a one and done, uh, I hope not done, but it is a one shot, so in theory one and done, yeah. King Jira story. And it is definitely the pick of the week. Yes. And it's one of those books where it's like, it's a silent issue, but I got through it so quickly the first time because mm-hmm. I was trying to read through these books quickly. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to go back through this a second time and read it really quickly. I've read it three times. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is. I mean, you're here for the art. It's great because it's a one shot. It's only four ninety nine. So you're paying and it's this, oversized. Yeah, so you're paying the price, and look at that. He's even got his little belt buckle. With <laughs> oh my god, it's so great with some cake. And like, <laughs> it is little, like, underwear. Yeah, yes, I'm here. Oh my god, I uh, love you. I love you, King Jira. I mean, we are biased towards kaiju books. It's um, true, if you haven't caught that. <laughs> and this book is just so fantastic. Again, I'm a lover of the art, mm-hmm. and this is the exact art style that I want for and all my books. I love the bat. It looks like the classic like Godzilla yeah. posters mm-hmm. if you want to show them the back of the book. Um, but it's like, it's oh, oh. it's so great. Yeah. You need to read it. It's, and by read it, I mean look at the art. And it's Scout. And it's Scout, who right. we love. Yes. And I was bummed because it has a number one, but it's just It's a one-shot. One shot. Yes. They did the Marvel label your one-shot one. And it's... it and it, But then it, it does actually say, like, grab me. I'm a one-shot story. Yeah. So you know what you're getting. Um, so those are our picks of the week. Uh, one other thing that I'm going to throw in for picks of the week before we switch is it is the end of House of Slaughter volume one. This is the end of the first volume of House of Slaughter. There has been talk the whole time about how House of Slaughter was kind of a, we knew it was a five part thing, uh, much like, uh, something that's killing the children in the originality where we thought it was a, a, a 12 part series. We have now been told by James Tynion that House of Slaughter will continue with a new creative yeah. team and it will be talking about the Scarlet Mask. Mm. So we are going to see the expansion of the Something is Killing the Ch- Children universe through House of Slaughter. Um, this is the end of volume one, which is Aaron's story with Aaron and Jace's story. Uh, and the last one that is done by Chris Sheehan, which if you may notice, Aww. this issue says this is a signed copy because Chris Sheehan stopped by the other day. We love you, Chris and Carla, y'all are, and Jack. We love you all. Um, they stopped by the other day and Chris signed a couple of copies. If you are lucky, I you think can, there's two or three a left. couple of signed mm-hmm. copies. Nigel's like, no, there's not. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I, it's. Chris Sheehan will come back, so I'll be able to get another one another time. Chris Sheehan, if this, you did not notice on uh, Twitter. on Twitter this week, did call us his LCS. So it's a strong possibility that Chris Sheehan will be uh, doing that. And also, Chris made a big post about how they, he was very thankful that he got to be a part of House of Slaughter and the kickoff of that. And did thank Bat City for being a part of his kickoff of being a part of House of Slaughter. And I would like to once again say thank you to Chris. Love uh, for letting okay. us be a part of that kickoff. Uh, it was Chris's first CGC signing. It was also our first CGC in-store signing. And uh, I'm very excited to have gotten that experience and getting to uh, work with Chris and um, his partner, Carla, who they are wonderful, and their dog, Jack, who is also wonderful. Um, but we got to do that for a small press meeting, have Chris's uh, first CGC signing, and kick off the House of Slaughter launch. Uh, if you have not picked up your House of Slaughter CGC, they are back. What are you waiting for? Uh, come get it, because you already paid for it. So if you haven't picked it up oh, yet, they're back. Yeah, they are back. back. Put it on your wall. Put they are beautiful. Wall. They... Yes. Uh, Chris did some really amazing remarks. Yes. They that were weren't remarks. They were sketches. They, they were, were sketches. full-blown sketches. Right. Yeah, they were full-on commission sketches <sighs> that were way underpriced. Thank you, Chris, again for just yeah, there was... showing your fans you love them. And it was great, too, because people were coming up and like, oh, I want this on it. Uh, Brian. Brian Lasseter got like, a Thanos yeah, holding Thanos. the like, mask yeah, as if he snapped so. all the, the uh, uh, like, that numbers. That was super cool. Dude, badass. Super cool. Yeah, so thank you, Chris. 
Chris. Um, and congratulations, House of Slaughter. I don't know if you know this. House of Slaughter ended up number one. Issue one of House of Slaughter was the number one individually, like, issue sold comic last year. Wow. Dang. So, for all of 2021, House of Slaughter ranked number one. Congratulations, Chris, uh, who we love, and the entire creative team. Um for House of Slaughter. And, of course, congratulations, James Tynan, for continuing to create uh, create a universe that is stupidly amazing. So, uh, yes, we are very excited. And I think Berserker was actually the number one printed comic. I could see that. Uh, last year. So, uh, congrats to Boom Studios at that point. I yeah. think Something yeah. is Killing the Children passed uh, the 2 million mark. For prints, like, there's been over, like, two million, like, issues of something that's killing the children in general. Two million printing? Yeah. Like, overall, like, there's been, like, two million issues of something that's killing the children printed or something ridiculous like that. So, congrats. Congrats, Boom Studio. But just from Boom. Like, if you just count, like, from Boom, not, like, store variants and stuff. So, congrats, Boom, for uh, just an all-star year. I know we didn't have a lot of Boom in this week, but if you didn't know, Boom Studios is just amazing and extraordinary. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ram says he needs three, four, and five of House of Slaughter, so we can definitely get those for you, buddy. Yeah. Um, uh, and then we've got yeah. a new bottle of wine. I'm not drinking it yet, so I don't know what it tastes like, but this is called Bread and Butter, and it's... it is a Pinot Noir from California. Which is weird. Uh, do you guys drink uh, Pinot Noir? We, do, we drink wine. I thought I was going to mix it up, you know. We, we I just love, stop taking all the Matt, signed copies. Matt <laughs> Matt loves <laughs> Pinot Noir. Uh, and that's so nice. Yes, and so does my... Yeah, it's... Uh, if you are a fan of red wine, you probably <laughs> like Pinot Noir. You should try it, Phil, and tell us what it tastes like. Sure. Whatever. It tastes like you bread and butter. He, yeah, he says, say, ooh, whatever, but then he drinks it the second he finds out that it's <laughs> something that... Meg- that is... How dare you assume that that's... You told me <laughs> to drink it. You said drink it for the sake of the live stream. It's very I, light. Look at how light it is. Don't act like you know what wine's supposed to smell like. Oh, <laughs> Ugh. Is that not good? I just told Phil, like, I just told Matt, I don't think Phil's gonna like it. I'm very curious now because Pino, I love, no. I love all the wines no, P, that Phil no. hates. So I'm super intrigued. P? That's Scott. All right. Oh, Scott said he's raising his whiskey to us. Scott, what kind of whiskey are you drinking? We are very uh, curious. And if you are drinking Cheers, it alone, uh, not alone. If you are drinking at home <laughs> uh, with us, please let us know what you're drinking. We love to hear people uh, also winding down or whatevering down their weekend. Even if it's soda, I'd love to hear what you're drinking. down their weekend. Can we do that? Can we, for like one week, change Ooh. the title to a different alcohol? Weed down your And we'll, <laughs> we'll just do shots. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, no, we gotta be like a second, because you won't whiskey. do them, and then I'll be out here like super drunk. No, I'll I'll drink whiskey. Title. I like whiskey. I don't like whiskey. Or like bourbon. I'm not. A, oh, then why don't you just drink bourbon? I don't care. Yeah, y'all have a bourbon. Yeah, but then down I'm, what weekend. am I gonna bourbon down my weekend? Yeah, you know, right. bourbon. Water down your bourbon. Water. I, cocktails are good. Right, cocktail. That's a different it's, thing. We're not there yet. We're, we're getting there. there. Right. Yeah. Uh, we've got, we've got some in stocks. <laughs> we've got some in stocks. Nobody heard what you said. We've got in stocks for you this week. We're going to fly through these really fast and see, uh, what we've got left in stock. We're going to start with Ben Riley Spider-Man number two, and it's only in stock only because Phil didn't get a chance to read it. Spider Carnage is back. Oh, there you go. I just giving you some spider spoilers. Uh, Girl Scouts is back. Can we open it up really fast just to show people what it looks like inside? Because they need to know what Girl Scouts looks like to know that it's amazing. Good job! It's Gemma food. Okay, you need it. It's yeah. wonderful. We also have like half off trades on Girl Scout if you need them. Uh, smooth, smooth. <laughs> De- uh, Department of Truth issue something. 16, I think. Uh, James Tynion still going, making some crazy uh, stuff. It's on the back. <laughs> <that> 16. <laughs> Uh, Scott said he's sipping on Centauri. I've never seen that face before. <laughs> Centauri time. Centauri time. It's my old man uh, trying to read face. Lost in translation. Lost in translation. Oh, yeah. he's just trying to keep with the theme of earlier in the show where we were talking about Matt movies. Uh, okay. Black Widow issue 14, Kelly Thompson's Eisner Award winning Black Widow series that gets no love um, from the critic outside of that uh miss marvel issue three beyond the limit we've got a lot of miss marvels and she's trying to figure it out catwoman number 40 uh we're here for the jenny prison variants but uh, the only reason i'm collecting catwoman 
But she won't stop. <laughs> It's gorgeous right I'm getting here. Saga, issue 56. Guys, you waited uh, four years, and now you only had to wait a month from one issue to the next. DC versus Vampires, issue 5. James Tynion and I believe Matthew Rosenberg both on that series. Wait, that's not... Oh, I thought... Is it that one or... Yeah. That's Tom Taylor, isn't it? Tom... Oh, no, it's Tanya. Tynion yeah. and Rosenberg. Yeah. I'm not a crazy person. I read it. I love that series. It's ridiculous. Uh, this is, uh, action, action. comics. Okay, thank you. I was like, you already took it away from 1040. me. 1040. Yes, and it's our Black History Month variant. Uh, Strange Academy number 16. One of the best. I love this series. Miles Morales, issue 35. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 90. We're still seeing Queen Goblin tear shit up. Phoenix Song Echo, issue 5. We need some more Echo in your life after watching Hawkeye. Here's how you get it. Iron Man, issue 17. This is a re-re variant, which is heating up. Nigel's probably going to take that copy. It's a Sway. Uh, it is a Sway cover, and Sway is awesome. Uh, Harley Quinn, 12. This is the Derek Chu variant. Um, Ghost Rider is back. Yes! This is my pick of the week. Issue one. This is apparently Nigel's pick Here of the week. Here, come talk about it. So good. Right. How was it? What was it good I about? loved it. Um, it was a psychological horror into Johnny Blaze's psyche and what he's dealing with and uh, being the uh, spirit of corruption in hell and whatnot. And Ooh. I don't want to give it too much. It's just issue one. but um, It's also Benjamin Percy on writing. Right. So I'm 100% on board. It's yeah, going to be so. that book that whenever I get it, in the new weeks, like, it's the first book I read. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dark Ages, issue four, 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 five, four, five. Uh, also, the Black History Month variant. And, oh my god. Shway. Right, Sway's doing all the Black History mm -hmm. Month variants, Shway. if you didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> Sway, bro. Sway, Blue, Sway, Blue Sway. and Gold, issue six of eight. Booster Gold and Blue Beetles. I feel like this book's been going on. It feels like it. Detective Comics 1054 is out. Phil's favorite, Aerosmith from Kurt Busiak, is oh, out. Oh, we're not going to talk about this one? No, we didn't read it. But. Well, shoot, I wanted to see the little dragons fly. Drag they fly with dragons on their uh, shoulders while their boots have dragon wings. Uh, Captain Marvel issue 36. This was a hot book this week, but only for the variant, I believe, which I'm sold out of. It so hot? So hot. Uh, Two Moons issue 10. <laughs> I love this story. This is another one that could I could... It's only because it's 10 issues in that I don't keep talking about it. Uh, Nobody's Child, issue 6. Let's save the rhinos, guys. Philadelphia issue 19. One of those incredible series yeah, that yeah, you need yeah, to keep yeah, up, yeah, keep up yeah, with. Yeah. Uh, Harbinger, number 5. There's a lot coming from Valiant. We're going to talk about some of that in uh, the news comic book news in just a second. Uh, Dark Interlude is back. It's been a minute, but... We are going to uh, see some more from that. Keep going. Black Hammer Reborn, issue nine. Jeff Lemire. Mm -hmm. That's a nice kid. Mm -hmm. Berserker is back. This was a really quick turnaround because volume one trade just came out. We're already back to mm. issue seven. And this is one of two foil covers. Every Berserker issue has two foil covers um, that are just foil versions of uh, cover A and B. Silk issue two Ooh. is out, and these covers are gorgeous. The variant covers Who of Silk. Who did this cover? Uh, we looked it up the uh, yesterday. FM? I already forgot. Nigel Frank and Miller. Just, no, oh. no. <laughs> Frank Nigel, Miller. Oh yeah, I did look it up. Nigel oh, yeah. just looked this up yesterday, and he doesn't remember already. But it is the it's same killing. cover for it, same it, artist it, oh, for all of the cover B. <laughs> cover B is going to be the same artist, and That's they're all nice. gorgeous. Um, Shang-Chi issue 9 Shang-Chi's been fighting the Marvel Universe and then some uh, this is Devil's Reign Villains for Hire issue 2 I love this Captain like Cap US agent I want you to cover I'm so Captain America uh, Wonder Woman Evolution 4 of 8 this is Stephanie Phillips run on Wonder Woman which is amazing because I love Stephanie Phillips um, and I brought both because this has a Simone de Mayo uh, variant mm. cover and Nice. I just needed to show off so Simone DeMeo's art. Soul Plumber is back again. If you are fans of last podcast on the left, uh, this is their comic. Audrey Mock. Audrey Mock. Is, oh, AM. Mm. Refrigerator Full of Heads. This is the Joe Hill House line of comics. This is volume two of Basket Full of Heads. Uh, five, four, four. 
Robin's it Robin issue eleven, Joshua Williamson's Robin story, uh who you all love. Um Hardware season one issue four, part of the DC I um the icons bringing back all of the uh, incredible milestone. milestone comics. Uh, Deathstroke Inc. issue six, uh, another story that is just actually heating up on its own that people need to be paying attention to. Uh, Aquaman Green Arrow Deep Target issue five of seven, and the launch of Aquaman bringing all the Aquaman together with this Black History Month variant featuring Jackson and Black Manta. Was um Robin's last week? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some of the books we have in stock now we are going to tell you about some trades we have in stock and I'm going to do this the other way uh, in case you were interested in catching up on Radiant Black we have volume 1 in stock $9.99 so, is it only a $10 trade for wow it is. So that's you fantastic you can get the first 6 issues Plus supplementary material. Ooh, supplementary materials. Uh, if you're getting ready for Batman, the Batman this week, uh, apparently you need to be there grabbing a copy of The Long Halloween because I have not seen a trailer, and if you spoil it in the comments, I will hate you forever. But I do know that they are giving out <laughs> copies of Long Halloween at select AMC theaters Whoa. this week. So issue, they have a... The whole trade. No, a special commemorative <laughs> movie version of... Issue one. Why are we going to AMC? Because what? they didn't have screenings. Gosh. Uh, Naomi season one from Brian Michael cool. Bendis. This is, uh, if you're watching the CW show, this is all of it. Season two is about to launch in comics uh, coming up in the next week. So you can start grabbing that. That's going to be single issues. Finally, it has been a very long time coming for a season two of Naomi. Um, we Live is about to come back. This is uh, Aftershock's big, giant universe that is unfolding. Uh, news I have. We Live has the We Live uh, Age of Paladins white and We Live Age of Paladins black coming out. Those are not, even though issue one of each of those launches at the same time, they are not the same issue. So the whole thing, people have been thinking like, oh, you can get the white or the black version, but it's going to be the same story. It's just going to have different covers. That's not the case. Aftershock did confirm this week that they are two separate issues. So if you are getting white, you need to also buy black because they are two separate issues following two separate characters that are going to lead to a connection point as the story unfolds for We Live Age of Paladins. So do not think, which I now know that I under-ordered because I thought they were the same issue, but I just learned literally on Thursday that they're not. So uh, get both. If you're going to get one, get both because they are two different stories for the same story. Uh, and then uh, Something is Killing the Children Volume 4. We all know that Something is Killing the Children Issue 21 is coming out soon because you all asked me if you could buy my ash can, which the answer was no. Um, <laughs> Something is Killing the Children. This is the volume that opens up the entire universe. This tells you about uh, Erica Slaughter's origin. It tells you about the House of Slaughter. It gives you all of the information you need to dive into the upcoming universe that will be unfolding even more in the return of Erica Slaughter and Something's Killing the Children 21. New trades this week uh, from Boom Studios, Eve. This is the complete story of Eve. This is a beautiful story about uh, a girl who is left to be the only person basically on the planet Earth as far as she knows once it has been flooded by water because all the glaciers melted and climate change and all the other things that we did to destroy the Earth. She wakes up one day and finds out that as far as she knows the only people left on the world is her and her teddy bear who her parents have programmed to actually be able to communicate with her. Um, we find as she goes through this world what's happened to the world and her story as we go along. This is beautiful. I really hope there is a volume two. This is a great, wonderful story about climate change done by people who are actually uh, scientists mm -hmm. and comic book writers. Mm -hmm. So really great story. Um, and last but definitely not least, my pick of the week for trades, <laughs> AWA, AWA Upshots 999 Trades of Volume 1 of Not All Robots by the great and wonderful Mark Russell. This is the story of uh, 
We've come to a point in society where robots have replaced humans in the workforce, and now there are new robots who will be replacing those robots. And so robots are wonder learning what it is like to be humans who are replaceable. And um, it's fantastic, wonderful, and uh, you didn't hear this from me, but it's not over. Ooh. That's all I'm allowed to say about that. You should read this story. It's fantastic. Who said that? Yeah, it's really great. <laughs> I mean, it's Mark Russell. It's Mark Russell. It's wonderful. You didn't need me to tell you that Mark Russell no. was wonderful. But uh, in case you did, Mark Russell is wonderful. And that story is fantastic. All right. And now we've got more wa no wine in my cup. Can I have some? I want to try this bread and butter that you think is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's Matt saying it's delicious. Nigel drank his. Nigel wants more. Anymore. So everybody please, is. Please, sir, I want some more. Please. Oh, yeah. I'm not pouring it. No. Oh, apparently Thanks. you're on your own, Nigel. Well, we've got some comic book news. Um, She's my pat say, Jack. I have to pour her wine. What is Comics Pro, yes, for those uh, who may be wondering. So I went to the Comics Pro Summit this week. Comics Pro is a trade organization for comic book retailers. So basically, not a union, but if we could unionize, basically it's our trade association. And um, Comics Pro is run by comic book store owners. They come together uh, and work to help us get things like medical benefits and uh, resources for a store, all kinds of wonderful things like that. We really, really appreciate everything they do, they do for us. Uh, Jen Haynes, our president this year, who just got voted in, uh, gave an incredible speech about running comic book stores since the 90s. And uh, being a woman who's run a comic book store since the 90s makes her my hero. Also, by the way, and I heard uh, from a lot of wonderful women who have owned comic book stores since the 80s and 90s. Uh, a lot of people don't think that it's a new thing that women have run comic book stores. It's not. And I loved getting to hear so many of their stories. But it is a conference where we get to hear from all of the publishers about all of the upcoming things that they have. I have literally like a spiral notebook here of notes on all the cool things that I don't know if they've been announced or not. Um... We get a chance to tell them all of your grievances, all of our grievances, all of our things that we're loving. Uh, it was fantastic and wonderful. I can't wait for it to be back in person because I've never got to go since it's been uh, COVID for the last two years. And a uh, really, really great opportunity. I can't wait for some of the things that you're going to get to uh, see in your subscription pool list coming soon because uh, publishers, big and small. One of the things that I will say was constantly reiterated by all of the publishers is the paper shortage is not going away. They are anticipating that it is going to get worse before it gets better. Um, and that we are going to see, like they were saying for the prose novel industry, they've basically told them just get used to selling backlist because yeah. you're not going to see a lot of novels getting printed this year. Um, for comic books, they're saying, you know, we're still going to see comics as far as we know in production, but this whole, Hey, so-and-so's comics didn't come out this month at all because the paper shortages is going to be something we're going to hear a lot more until 2023, possibly even through end of 2023. Oh, wow. So, because um, it's not just, there is a paper shortage, but there's also a labor shortage for unloading the ships. So they were, at one point, somebody said that there's like 77 ships were on the dock needing to be unloaded. And two weeks later, it was only down to like, like it was down to only like 64 ships still needed to be unloaded. So like they hadn't even unloaded, like they'd barely unloaded like 10 ships in like two weeks. So there's a lot of opportunities. That said... BCW did tell us that hopefully, like, their supply problem, like, they should be caught up on a lot of their supply shortages soon. Mm. So I'm really looking forward to that. They said that uh, the guy from BCW gave the best analogy. He said, um, if you remember that old commercial where the small business went online for the first time and they were, like, watching their at their cells come in and they were like, ooh, we got oh, a yeah. cell. And it was like, ooh, we got two cells. And then it was like, oh, my God, we have more cells than yeah. we can handle. <laughs> they were like, that was us at the beginning of COVID. They were like, everybody suddenly wanted to organize their comics. So we were like, ooh, look at this big cell that came in. And then it was like, oh, there's another one. Uh, uh, we don't have this product anymore. So it, they are, like BCW said, they are definitely on the path to get that back nice. in stock. So we shouldn't see, hopefully, as many delays, fingers crossed, on, like, bags and boards and BCW bins and stuff. And they are, um, they have so many ideas for even more products for comics and cards that we should be seeing coming up in the next year. So I'm really excited to see uh, what that brings. 
other things that were announced during Comics Pro because they gave the creators a chance to announce because they knew they were going to tell us. Um, and some that you might have heard is there's this little title that you may or may not be familiar with called Batman. And a guy that you may or may not have heard of named Chip Sadarsky is going to be taking over. I don't know. I think he's an up-and-comer. I don't think anybody's ever really heard of him. But if you didn't hear that announcement, uh, you missed out on all of last week. Uh, you weren't on the internet last week. Yeah, I don't be- know how you would have missed that. Because Chip Sadarsky is taking over Batman and you do not have long to wait. It is only um, a few issues away before Chip Sadarsky takes over Batman. So... You're probably going to... I really honestly feel bad for Joshua Williamson. Me too. Because Joshua Williamson's Flash run was incredible. It ran for 100 issues. It was amazing. Uh, But Joshua Williamson is already leaving Batman, hopefully to go to something else in DC. I don't uh, know where where he would... I would want Joshua Williamson to go next. I don't know. But I hope we get to keep Joshua Williamson along around. But... Don't do that to me. <laughs> we do have Chip Zdarsky coming on to Batman, which means Phil's going to read Batman. I mean, I've actually been reading the Williamson run because I do love Joshua, do love Williamson, Joshua Williamson. Um, because uh, that Flash is probably one of my favorite Flash runs. I just it it built it pi- built more of his universe, um, and that was kind of the beginning of Joshua Williamson. So anytime he's on a title, which he's kind of become, you know, one of DC's. Uh, more mainstay writers mm-hmm. um so hopefully we'll see maybe a big event book for him from him next or uh you know because i know dc's building towards their big event for the year uh so we may Dark see, justice um yeah we may see him in that it's the new crisis um event essentially but <clears throat> you know or maybe put him on something like green lantern give him a try at maybe another character um, but I mean, if there was anyone else that I would want to see step into that role after him, it would it would be Zdarsky, without a doubt. Yeah, and if you're a fan of Zdarsky's uh, Daredevil run, you know that doing that street level vigilante kind of situation is perfect. And uh, you know, maybe we'll just see like a a Batman Daredevil crossover for <laughs> Chip Zdarsky world. Yeah, I mean, we know that's never going to happen. No, they don't I, really I feel like play that way just anymore. getting the the JLA Avengers thing was probably really tough for both of those companies to come together. Yeah. It was very much. Um, so I, I would imagine that's going to be very hard to do. Um, but I haven't been enjoying Chip Zdarsky's um, the mini series he's doing. The Batman the Night or Gotham Night, Goth- yeah, or something. The, the Night, the Night, yeah. Um, which is kind of like an origin story. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe that will lead into it. Because I, I, I doubt that they're going to have him pick up where Williamson left off. Kind of like what Williamson did after uh, Tiny and Ended. Kind of just picked up where he left off. So I'd be curious to see if they're going to do like a soft reboot but keep the numbers. Are they going to start over with a new number one? Um, I'd be curious to see how how they're going to play this out. Because I yeah. feel like if you were going to get somebody like Zdarsky on Batman, you'd want to start over with a number one. Oh, absolutely. But we'll see, because it doesn't. So oh. we'll see. So, it, okay. We'll see how this goes. As far as I know, I don't think it's starting over at number one. So we'll see how Zdarsky's Batman goes. Uh, but we are going to see that very, very soon. Okay. Sure. Um, and and uh, Jimenez on art. Jorge Jimenez on art? Yes. Yes. So yes. that's going to be crazy. Uh, even just the, the teasers... Uh, and speaking of art teasers that got everybody's attention, Exo Man of War. Uh, oh, Liam really? Sharp is taking over. Ex- Liam Ar- Liam Sharp. No. I Liam, was expecting the other announcement. Liam Sharp, Becky Cloonan, and Michael Conrad will be taking over Exo Man of War with a new number one this fall. And Liam Sharp released a poster that like blew everybody's mind, which that poster will be real. Um <laughs> But, yeah, there is Becky Clunan and Michael Conrad will be writing Exo Man of War. And uh, I've heard that there's so many things coming from Valiant that are, like, both uh, for all the people who have been Valiant fans forever who are like, oh, I miss, like, old Valiant. You're going to get that. But all the people who are like, oh, I really need some stronger writing from from, uh, Valiant, you're also going to get that. That Bloodshot Unleashed that you're looking at right now, they were like, Punisher Max on a stream. Um, 
Yeah, there's, there's, that's not, I don't think this is a poster, that's just the cover, but yeah, you're gonna see a lot from Exo Manafor, uh, art coming up soon with Liam Sharp on it, so, and, and I've heard it looks extraordinary from the Valiant people, they were like, it's, it's fantastic. I'm more intrigued by this Bloodshot. Literally, Bloodshot Unleashed is also coming, and it is the most violent Bloodshot it's going to ever be, and then Book of Shadows is from... Cullen Bunn, who's been writing Shadow yeah, Man. Shadow Man. Um, but it is going to bring a lot of the uh, classic Valiant, like, shadow creatures and magic creatures back together. I just told you, it's Guy Cullen Bunn. I just said that. He's been writing Shadow Man, though, and it's been so good. I will say that. I'm, so, I'm very picky with my Valiant titles, mm-hmm. if I'm going to be honest. Ninja K, I really like. Bloodshot's pretty cool. I've never heard you call Ninja K. Ninja is what I... I, I thought it was... Oh, I, I thought know. it was Ninja K. I've always heard Ninja. Ooh, now I want to know. Do you say Ninja K or Ninja? Somebody like anybody that reads. Well, the, heard, however that. you type it out, it's going to be the same. No, because you can put Ninja hyphen K if you say Ninja K. But if you say Ninja, just type Ninja. Now, or Nin J A C K, Ninja. I mean, you could just type Ninja if you say Ninja, and then type Ninja K. So, has, so type Ninja. You're ninja. making this more complicated, <laughs> Peanut Gallery. Nobody asked you. Um, Ninja hyphen K, if you say Ninja K, ninja, just write it out if you say Ninja, because I'm just really curious what people say now. I think the only reason I said Ninja K is because I feel like there was a period of time where I was saying Ninja, and then I read an article where it was like Ninja K. But I thought, yeah, no. What, what, I mean, so far, we're getting Ninja votes in the comments. It's, uh, yeah, but they're, they're always wrong. I don't trust them. <laughs> um, uh yeah i you know valiant's one of those that like every once in a while i'll kind of like dip my toes in archer and armstrong i thought was pretty good for a little bit i have news for you oh all right well let's hear it no i'll have news for you (laughs) oh not for them for you (laughs) um but yeah i mean uh i'm i've always you know kind of wanted you know been interested in valiant so you know, maybe this will be it. Liam Sharp doing uh, Exo Man of War. With Becky writing it? <sighs> yeah. You yeah. can't go wrong. Becky Clune and Michael Conrad have, like, just, they're an amazing team. I just don't remember what Exo Man of War is about. It's okay. You don't have to. It's a number one. They'll tell you. That's true. Becky will tell you what it's about. She's That's great true. at, like, revamping series, I will say. So that is a thing coming back. I just want you to know Nigel voted N- Ninjak. Yeah, Which you well, wouldn't have known I don't trust Nigel either. Um, without the comments, you'd have never known. Um, there is another thing that is coming to comics uh, re- soon, which is a first appearance. So this is your one speculator alert that I will give you, first appearance in comics. But Venus de Milo is coming to comic books for the first time. Woo-hoo! If you are a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the cartoons and all of that, you may remember Venus de Milo as the original female Ninja Turtle. Yes. In the comics, we've only had Jenica so far, but Venus will be coming to the comic books uh, in a couple, only in a couple issues from now. And, uh, there is a lot to come with Venus de De Milo. So if you are a fan of Venus and you've been like, I really want her to show up, this is your chance. Shut up, man. There is going to be a (laughs) lot, including, uh, some stuff with free comic book day. Yeah, I'm really excited. And I think it's like the next issue or two is what I saw it, it is. Uh, in the uh, on a lot of the conversations. It is very soon. I mean, I can tell you the exact issues if you want to know. Um, what issue her. are we on? What issue are we on? That's a good question. Did, yeah, it's like it's right there. What issue is that? 124? 126. One, two, oh. So it's the next issue. So it's the next issue. The yeah. next, so I did not order enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, Venus is coming for the next issue. And uh, then we'll see cover appearances and things like that to follow. Which so, maybe yeah. we'll get a venus Jenica crossover. I would love series. a venus Jenica crossover. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Venus is on her way. You guys are really loud over there. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, Peanut Gallery. Man. Uh, peanuts, we won't talk. <laughs> I mean, actually, that's true. If I gave the two of y'all peanuts, y'all would not talk. That is, both of y'all love them so much. Weren't you just eating a cheeseburger like five minutes ago? Oh my God, I want a cheeseburger. Okay, it's so been three hours. 
So, yeah. So what else do you got, uh, Phil, that well, you said there was another one that you were really excited about, another announcement this week. What was No, that was it. Oh, that was the one? Yeah, okay, yeah. So Venus, Venus to Milo. Venus was the one I was excited for. Um, so those are the other things. The Bat City news, I will tell you, is once again, uh, if you had a George Perez book that you sent out, uh, if you haven't talked to Matt yet, please do because George Perez's uh, signing has been canceled as he is in hospice now. And uh, that has been replaced with a Jim Starlin signing and a Marv Wolfman signing. So if you had a George Perez book at CGC, you do have the option to transfer it to either a Jim or a Marv thing or continue to get it graded with a George Perez label. You can also get a Jim signing or a Marv signing and still get the George Perez label right. on it. And the money from the George Perez label does still go to George's family. Okay. Uh, CGC is still giving all the extra fees for That's George Perez la- labeled to George's family. Um, and then it it on that note, because those are due uh, very like coming up within the next couple of weeks, I just want to remind you that Matt is close to cleaning and pressing. People keep coming in and going, I didn't know you were close to cleaning and pressing. Well, here it is. Once again, a reminder, Matt is close to cleaning and pressing because all of these signings keep coming up. If you have a book for one of the signings, that does not count. Matt will get your book ready for the signing. That is why he's close to cleaning and pressing. So if you are bringing in something for uh, uh, Jim Starlin or, or Marv Wolfman, uh, just make sure you coordinate with Matt on getting it in uh, to him so that you can uh, uh, get that clean pressed ready to go for the signing. Uh, Scott said that George Press did come home today. Yes. So uh, that's good news. Uh, thank, yeah. Congrats, George, uh, for getting to go home. And um, I hope you get to spend some more time with your family. And uh, if if you are uh, looking to get those books in, um, or if you have different books for Marv or, or uh, Jim, make sure you coordinate with Matt. Give us a call at the store starting on Wednesday uh, since we will not be open tomorrow or Tuesday. Give us a call on Wednesday if you need to know more details about when Matt needs those books from you or coordinating a schedule for when Matt will be here to kind of talk to you through those books. Um, And yes, Scott said much love to George and his family. Absolutely. Uh, We love you, George. You have been an impact on all of us. Um, If you haven't been reading the letters from the comic creators in the back of your comics, most comic creators have been issuing letters to George Perez as their letter in the back of the book recently. So um, just give one of the, give the letters to the back of the book. You should always pay attention to those, but now's a good time to see some of those incredible stories from creators on how George Perez has impacted them and what they're doing. Um, Comics out this week that you definitely need to be uh, paying attention to. A Thing Called Truth, issue 5 of 5 is out. Mm. Crossover 12 is out. And according to Donnie Cates, you need this book. Um... (laughs) Yeah, there you go. How many times has he said that? You know, though? all of them. But this one is definitely one uh, that he's saying is is a big deal. That's why he made sure that everybody read Crossover 11 on the day it came out because he needed to spoil all of the things coming in Crossover 12. That's why he came back to Twitter. <laughs> I will definitely tell you that from what I've heard from Johnny, Crossover 12, you definitely want to read. Uh, Me, You Love in the Dark trade paperback is out this week. Mm. Um, Newburn number four is out. Speaking of... Uh, Chip Sadursky. Uh Rogue Sun issue one is out. So if you didn't get a super massive uh, crossover, you may not uh, event one shot. You may not know who Rogue Sun is. Rogue Sun is a the first book to expand the Radiant Black universe. Uh, She-Hulk number two is out this week. Lots of people came in last week because that was its original date looking for She-Hulk number one. It was pushed back to this week. It will be out t- uh, on Wednesday. Strange number one is out. So if you read Death of Doctor Strange and you've been like, I can't wait for Clea to take over as Sorcerer Supreme, here it is. Women in charge of the world as they should be. Um, the What If Miles issue is out this week. Miles uh, Morales as Captain America. Your Slaughter Pack issues 6 through 12 is out this week. Um, Carriers number 2 from Red 5 about the militant pink pigeons. I always say penguins. Militant pigeons overseeing New York is out. Very good fellows. Um, or good feathers from hey. Animaniacs. Uh, Cowboy Bebop issue two is out this week with a okay. uh, local artist Lamar on art. Last book you'll ever read, number five, is finally out. I'm bringing that up because I get asked every week if we know when last book you'll read. 
you'll ever read is number five is coming out because people want to know if there is actually a payoff to the story that they put in to we're gonna find out it's Colin Bunn so no <laughs> or maybe yes we'll Every, see we'll see it's it's you know hit or miss uh on that we'll find out in last book you'll ever read issue five finally out this week I can't wait to see if we actually learn our lesson um, in this issue. So uh, issue five is finally out. It has been delayed for about two months now because of paper shortages. So we'll see what happens. Um, that is all of our comic industry news. That's all of our titles. There are some incredible ones. We will see you in the shop on Wednesday for new comic book day. If we don't see you then, then we'll see you next Sunday as we wind down your weekend. I don't have that. That's a lie. Uh, we'll see you next <laughs> weekend uh, when we wind down your weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us, Phil. It was nice to talk to you. As always. always. And uh, nice to talk to you guys. We'll see you then.